get to it. Okay. How long will you work? When did you? I started as an intern for Wendy at uh, 98.7 KISS. I was in college here in New Jersey at William Patterson College, you know, major in radio and television. And, you know, in college, you have to get an internship. So I was applying to like Z100, KTU, uh, all these stations. And then I was like, oh, you know, I forgot KISS FM, you know, Red Alert, all that. So I uh, applied. So did you and did you know of when? You know what, Jonesy, which is so funny. I used to, I've always wanted to be on the radio. I tell you no lie. I always wanted to be on the radio since I was uh, younger. And I would just listen to the radio, listen to the radio. When I got to college, Wendy used to do the late, late nights, like, Saturday nights and filling in and stuff like that. And All I just right, so I'm gonna move you. No, look, I'm gonna move you along. <laughs> oh, because I'm taking too long. Ah! And, I need, and, 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 and I need you to look into the camera. Okay. Our producer saying that you look into the camera. All right, all right. So my bad, my bad. Did you deliberately try to get up? Did you deliberately try to get hired by Wendy? And how did that happen? Or did they just put you together? Uh okay. I'm gonna talk real quick and kind of like condense everything. I got hired as a promotions intern, you know, mailing out the prizes and everything like that. And then one day while I kiss FM in the promotions department, I saw Wendy Williams. So I was like, oh, like that's Wendy, like, wow. So I was like, um, hi, Wendy, you know, my name is Trevor. My real name's Trevor. And um, she was like, hi, like that. And I was like, um, you know, I love listening to you on the radio, da, 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 da. Next day, hi, Wendy. She was like, hi. Next day, hi, Wendy. She was like, hi, you're here again. I was like, yeah, no, I'm an intern here at the, in the promotions department, mailing out everything, the prizes, everything. You want $98 in Kiss Cash? Mailing out those checks and stuff I'm like that. Your face. All right, enough. <laughs> I need you to remember that we don't need all the da 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 All right. So Did make a long story short. Exactly. Make a long story short. I asked her, could I answer the request lines for her show? That's how I... God. And she Lord. said yes. And that's, said and yes. That's how, all right. So, all right. Were you I'm there? sorry, Jonesy. Listen, no, it's fine. It's okay. Bear with me because I'm just trying to get through this and get to this before the next freezing of me. I'll be Mr. <laughs> Freeze. Um, <laughs> so, were you there? She talks about how she, I guess she came to New York and she had already acquired a drug habit. Were you there when the person was dropping off the drug? Were you dropping a scal? No. Were you Josie, bringing the drugs? I you? was not <gasps> bringing the drugs. Uh, I was a young 19, 20 year old college kid, uh, to be honest. And I did not know that she was doing what she was doing. Are you serious? I'm so serious. But then when she told it, publicly hmm. and let it out I was like oh that you know that the and I put two and two together and two and two is four I had to do the math you know what I can't. <laughs> no Josie yeah I, I had no idea uh I, I had no idea to be honest so I just my fondest memory back then listen was when Wendy would talk shit about somebody and then she would say, I don't care if you come up here and try to beat me up because Bulge is in the room. Right, 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 right. But can you tell everybody about Bulge? Oh, that, okay. Bulge was a character that Wendy created. Makeup. A yeah. fake, phony, fraud character that Wendy would make up. So now I'm all along with Wendy on her show. She's including me, letting me get on the mic and everything. So just the two of us would bring the crazy, make a lot of noise in the studio by ourselves and just create chaos on Kiss FM with like the top eight at eight. And I was just on the background and she would say bulge and I'd like make a noise like, yeah, 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 yeah. and then it was just all comical and theatric. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, it's all being exposed tonight <laughs> on Conversations with Ms. Jones. To when, you hear, <laughs> when, you, 
There is no bulge, idiot. But, you but, already said Josie, that. could I say something? Wait, to the before you say that. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen that are joining us tonight, I'm Jonesy, this is Skeletor. Skeletor is, is like the original Charlemagne, for those of you that don't know. And we're not uh, mad that you don't know. Your parents probably know if you do not. But every time you hear the word, this FM said, take a drink of whatever you've got beside you. Go ahead, Skel, as you were. Okay, Wendy, uh, Charlemagne, Charlemagne, and Skeletor, Skeletor. Shut up. Right. Okay. For the sake of the- Red light. For the, okay, 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 okay. Green light, red Skel light. And I, Skel and I have, have cold words. Red light, green light. When I'm doing, he's got a red light, green light, me. Red light, no. Okay. So back was to this. More... So listen. So listen. So Bulge was a made-up okay. bodyguard because Wendy was afraid of the artist that she was talking about. So it wasn't surprising to me when she met Kevin because I feel like, and tell me if you agree, she was looking for protection and muscle. Um. Okay, Bulge was made up, but this is what I wanted to say. As the Bulge character on the radio became like more and more uh, on the radio where Bulge, 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 there were people when we would go out who had muscle and Wendy would be like, you know, that's Bulge. And of course it was me, Skell, and her like that. Okay, so then she really did need a Kevin. Like she actually knew that the gig would be up at some point and she couldn't keep doing that. I'm trying to paint the picture of what the movie's about because the movie talks about when they met. And I remember when they met because, well, the movie tells one, uh, one rendition of when they met. Do you remember okay. when they met? Did she come and tell you when? Um, I don't remember when they met. All I remember her is saying that um, she's, she's, dating Kevin, right? Okay, so before she said that, she called me because I used to always be filling in for Angie and sometimes okay. filling in for when we would have that okay. overlap of her doing her last few breaks and me doing the opening break for Angie. And she told me okay. that she met a guy and he owned a beauty salon. Do you not remember okay. that? I don't. So now oh, we're no. talking, now we're at Hot 97, right? Right. This is when okay. we came to the two stations merge. I'm just trying okay. to skip because again, I don't know how long I've got before I freeze again. So she told me that she freeze met him at Kevin and he owns either a beauty salon or a bunch of beauty salons, right? Okay. And she said he offered me a, a free hairdo. So I went Ooh. and we met. Oh, That's what okay. she said. And then oh. a week later, she said, Jonesy, they want you to come in and get your hair done for free. So can you come meet can you come meet me in Brooklyn and I'll take you to his salon? Now, oh, did you go? Now, this is not to say that he was doing the hair. He was not a hairstylist. He was an okay. owner. And I okay. went. And, and you got I, a hairdo. You got your I, hair done. I think my hair was already, I wasn't here for that. I just wanted to meet him. Because I, oh. like, I just wanted to meet him because she was so excited about him. And okay. so I remember meeting him. All was well. We were in, <clears throat> I think we were in, we came out of the beauty salon and we were getting ready to leave and we were in either his car, her car, something. She got out and went to the store. Okay. And he and I started talking and I okay. said, so, you know, what you, what you really here for? I need to know. And he was like, what you mean? What you mean? And I said, Wendy's going to be really big. She's always had desires to be on TV. She showed me like three or four pilots that never got picked up. And I mm -hmm. just feel like now that she's on the hot 97 um on the hot 97 engine this is a chance for her to get on tv and he said okay. he said and i'm gonna be right there with her when she blows up when she blows i blows and that's what he said and i'm not saying allegedly because that is what he said and i don't remember a lot matter of fact i don't remember anything but i remember that <laughs> okay red light oh, oh no. No. shout out to all the beauty salons I wanted to do that. No, okay. Josie, wait. So yeah. what you're saying is you and Wendy used to hang out? No, like, we found out she wanted me to meet him and they, and his Okay, salon. and that's the only that's the only they time y'all hung out. Well, she invited me to her home when she lived in Port 
Liberté a few times. Okay, I'm sure we probably were at the same parties at the Port Liberté in Jersey City, right? I actually didn't show up, but only because. Oh, okay. I used to be chasing behind Dougie so hard back in them days that when he called, I jumped, child. Don't judge me. Hey, yo, I. Oh, but. Right. <laughs> and Wendy would have an attitude, and then we'd come back together at the studio the next week and we'd catch up. So. Okay, okay. So that is what I remember of the meeting. So Kevin, I feel, had an agenda. But here's the thing, people, and I'm putting this question out to anybody that's listening, which, by the way, thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you for you. joining me and Scal, if you just got here. Thank you. It's the Wendy Williams Conversations with Miss Jones, what we're doing right here tonight. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will get to all questions tonight in a few minutes or throughout the night and in the next few minutes. But yeah. it just brought me to the point because in the movie, they say that they met at a club and that Mr. C uh -huh. introduced them mm -hmm. and I don't recall. That's why I was asking you. I know for a fact she said he owns a beauty salon and he wants to offer you a free hairdo. Come to the beauty salon and you can meet him. So let's okay. move on from there. Okay. Okay. So I just want to shout out. I want to shout mm -hmm. out Jonesy because I got my papers. Shout out to all everybody <laughs> on Facebook and shout out to everybody on YouTube. What's good? Skeletor, Jonesy. It's all about Wendy's movie. All right, go ahead, Jones. I'm finished. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and um, I want to shout out DJ Envy and Michael Sean for our reunion, which will start Michael on Monday. Michael Sean was good. Yeah. Envy, yeah, yeah, what yeah. up? And that will be also on my YouTube channel, um, Miss Jones reunion. Miss Jones in the morning. The that reunion. starts so Monday. Back that to starts the Monday, Monday, right? Yes. All right. Monday. Back to the, yes, and it's a okay. YouTube show, so they can Monday. log in. It might even be a Monday. So back to the movie. So the okay. other consistency that I thought, which is just minor, okay. she was so skinny and pulled together when she came to New York. Wendy was still fat when she got to hot. So do you remember that? I, I don't want to say fat, but she thought she was fat because she brought in pictures of her body marked up by the plastic surgeon and she showed them to me. And she was mm -hmm. like, he's going to take care of this. He's going to get rid of that. So I don't know if we're just, I just don't want, I don't know. I don't know. Was but that a, was just an inconsistency. Was she a fatty? Um, she thought she was. I, she thought she was fat? She thought she was. She did. That's why she was right. always she, bringing you know, in. You know, Wendy, Wendy would always be like, she's a big girl and stuff like that. But right. So I'm, anyway, in the movie, it doesn't show that. that. Doesn't show that. Okay. Listen. Okay. Yes, okay. So, but Jonesy, you know what? I do. I do remember the one day at Hot ninety seven. You know, I'm behind the scenes producing her show and everything like that. And she came in, and her breasts were like bang. I was like, she was like, I got my. Breath. I'm <laughs> like, oh, you know, can I touch them? Like stuff like that. Out. I was like, when do you got your breast? Red done? light. Red light. Oh, red light. <laughs> it was like bang. She talks about that in the movie. She talks oh, about she, that. Right, right. Now, I saw that. Let's yeah. Get to the point where the ratings are like really taking off for Wendy. She's probably right. outperforming every show that's including Flex, Angie, every show. And then one day we turn on and she's gone. Okay, but Jonesy, you remember Hot 97 at that time, we was just always number one. Every book, Tracy would come in, we're number one, oh, we're number I know. one, we're number one. Every but, single show. But her ratings were high, right? Her ratings, I think her ratings were probably higher than anyone. And I okay. remember her and Angie always had low friction, little slick stuff, little exchanges. And there was one day that I was up there, I think I was about to fill in, I don't know who I was about to fill in for. But it was a mess. And I could tell that there had been a war. And I went in the studio. Who told me? I, now I really can't remember. Anyway, her and Angie had a fight. But it wasn't a real fight. It was like a windmill. You know how when you girls do the windmill? And a windmill? <laughs> a so, windmill? Because neither ah. one was about that life. Like, neither one was really about that life. You said a windmill. Right. It was a lot of that. <laughs> right. And all I know is that Tracy, um, I had to fill in for 
somebody got suspended. Oh, I think they both got suspended, but because we were short on fill-ins, because I was the fill-in girl, mm -hmm. Angie had to be suspended for one week, and then Wendy had to be suspended for the next week. So I got the fill-in for both those bitches and make a lot of money for me at that time, because, you know, <laughs> it was a good thing, but so, um, yeah, th I think Angie felt a way because Wendy was always talking about people, and then Angie has to go out and mingle with these people and i think that don't you think that's part of what added to their animosity because i don't think there was much else mm. Mm. or or was there something else Scal? did you see exchanges between she and angie that i'm not aware of uh i didn't because wendy would do the show right before angie right wendy would do two to six on hot and then Angie came in at six to 10, right? Right, so you never saw exchanges right. between them? You know why I never saw really any exchanges? Because as the producer and the board op, when I pressed the commercial at 5.52, I was out grabbing my coat and I was out the door. You know how that was. I can't, I can't. I had to be in, those, be in those streets too. Right, you were trying to make your coin too. Everybody, I was trying, yeah. Big shout out to everybody out there that's about their bag. Take another sip. Thank you for joining. Hope Thank you're you. enjoying. This is where yes. I want to be. This is where I want to be. <laughs> it's Boy. definitely going to be because listen, on a Friday I night, found, I found some classic, classic, classic Wendy tapes, and I didn't tell you this. Did you? I from what, Hot 97, Kiss FM, BLS? I think, this is, I think this is from Power 99 in Philly and BLS. When she was back at BLS, but she was syndicated into Power. So big shout out to all my Philly people. Ooh, ooh. What up, Philly? South Philly? West Philly? Yeah. And we'll talk about that because you actually wound up doing radio in Philly as well. Wendy went, you went, I went. And, yes, um, Jonesy. Yes. So, um, Producer DB, keeper of the brand, if you don't mind, can we hear that first clip? I was I was just very uh yeah. Wendy Williams experience on the radio. Oh yes. Good afternoon, friends. Oh, I'm glad that we're all here together. I um right before the show today, I was making um my telephone call rounds for my consultations for bunion surgery. So, you know, because it's been like three weeks what? since I mentioned that, you know, I wanted to get it done. Then I'm like, I, you know, I've just become so busy with other things. I didn't have a chance to really do my research. But um I got a handle on four different doctors um that I'm going to do my consultations with. Just four. Normally I recommend, you know, do six. But six is like, okay, if I'm exasperated and I can't deal with the four, can't deal with the four, with the four, four, then I'll call two more. But I don't have time in the day to make six different damn appointments. You know, you know what I mean? So I'm going to do four of them. I don't really have that kind of time either, but it's my feet. There are only two I have. And without your feet, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> A little play on words there. Jonesy, that was from BLS in Philly, you said? Yes. Now, wow. I want you to listen to the next part. Denisha, can okay. you play the next the next clip that says I think it's called bunions? I think. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I had to label these things. I want to shout out to Vita and Michelle. Uh, and everybody's office so far has been equally as nice. You see, because one of them you can immediately cut out the funky people on the phone. As far as I'm concerned, you know. Because what self-respecting doctor is going to allow some shenanigans to go on at the inception of hello? I'd like to make a consultation. You know what I mean? So, so far, everybody's equal. Everybody's really nice. And, um, you know, I'm going for it. I don't know whether it'll be covered with medical insurance. I don't, maybe, maybe not. If it's not, I'm still getting it done. Because um, I'm getting new feet for my birthday. Is what oh. my husband said. Oh. Whoa. Is that like somebody giving you a vacuum cleaner for Mother's uh, Day? Yeah. Whoa. You know, body parts for your birthday? Love. Whoa. Yeah, is that love or is that the, the criticism in the deepest form? Now, wait a minute. Am I insulted? Whoa. This love is for it. Whoa. You really love me. My original. She said, if you really, if you really love me, you'd love my original feet. So 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I understand that we're here for self-improvement, but was that like a red flag, ladies and guys? Is that a red flag when you get in a relationship with someone under the guise of I love you as you are, and then you go start trying to fix my shit on the low? Get at us at the chat, in the chat, and let us know. I think I think that was might have been a red flag. Not red okay. enough to leave the relationship, but just to have an eye out for a pretty foot bitch. I need to drink. Jonesy, that. you said a pretty foot <laughs> <laughs> a pretty that's buttery, funny because clearly Sharina probably has some pretty buttery feet okay Jonesy I see Tanya says that's definitely a red flag Tanya just Thank said you, Tanya. that I agree thank you Tanya and it's like an auburn it's like an auburn it's not quite red red blaring red but so I pulled that clip I want you guys to hear that and hey Jonesy I, go ahead um let, let's get to some questions. That's what the producer okay. is saying. Okay, good. Go ahead. Okay. My question? I don't know. Whose question? What's she talking about? Shit, you the one with the inside connection. Uh, ah! Look, I'll work it. I'm busy. I'm feeling, I'm I'm feeling busy. away. I don't have I'm, no thing in I'm my ear. Go ahead. So since I'm the producer, no. here's the producer voice. <clears throat> Hi, Jones. What was the outcome of the issue you had with Wendy's ex-husband? <gasps> Wait, he tried Jonesy. to kill me. Scale, they tried to kill me. That's one of my questions that I was going to ask you because I saw you. Let me on you. like the YouTube or something and it says like kill Jonesy dead or something. Red light scale. Oh, uh, scale. Enough. <laughs> my bad. So let me tell y'all about that. But so, you're still alive. This is where you want to be. Green light. Friday night. Talking about Wendy's movie. Go ahead, Jonesy. I'm sorry. I'll fall back. I can't. Kiss FM. Just so I can have a swig. That kiss means we care. And you know all your former colleagues from Kiss are on this motherfucker under fake un assumed names. So listen, no, Joan, it's all shenanigans. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, don't be sorry. This is the place where sorrow is welcome. So, I was on vacation. A much where? Different, where uh, at? I was in Aruba. Okay, wait. Let me write that down. Aruba. I was in Aruba, and I was at the pool. And somebody took my chair, by the way. So I came in to get my husband, so we could get my chair back. And my phone starts ringing, but I'm in Aruba. So who's calling internationally, right? Right. right. It's Sharice from Changing Faces. Hi, Sharice. Yeah. So she goes, are you okay? And I'm like, uh, yeah, somebody took my chair. You heard about this all the way home? And she goes, no, bitch. That bitch is trying to kill you. That bitch, so I'm she goes, it's all in the news. They lose that. So I turn on the TV in Aruba, in my hotel room, and there's right. a freaking split screen of me and what, like that picture above. And it right. says, radio DJ rival plots murder. Uh, so I'm in Aruba sweet. gagging. So I had to start waking up my husband or he's like, what's going on, whatever. And then we hear that her and Kevin, which I later found out it was really all Kevin. Cause me and Wendy never even really had no problem. It was always Kevin trying to get between our friendship cause he was threatened thinking that I wanted to be on TV which I never did. I just wanted to get a hit record on the radio. But anyway, <laughs> I like that. Okay, okay. So yeah, so yeah. So they tried to freaking have me murdered and the plot was supposedly to get me early in the morning. Huh. I showed them cause I was never on time. Hmm. Okay, red light. No, what <laughs> Wait, that means I got a question. Okay, red light. Jonesy, you were married? Scout, Are you married? I am absolutely not married and red motherfucking light. Because oh. <laughs> My I bad. Am, 
I will never talk about that nightmare of okay. a. Okay. Yeah, okay. No. Ooh, child. No, okay. please. Thank you. Okay. Lord. Let's let's nice. laugh it off. Let's laugh it off. It's that them. It's that them. <laughs> You're going 97. <laughs> You're yes. going to summer jam. <laughs> <laughs> Trinace, I do know stuff. Somebody just said, I don't know anything, and I came with notes. <laughs> Jonesy, are you oh, froze? Do you have any more questions? Oh, so then, so look, so. Oh, no. Am I? Am I? Um, no, you're not froze. Jonesy, what I wanted to ask you, though, is about um, you going to Philly and what station did you go to? Because I wasn't in Philly oh. by the time you got to Philly. You see what I'm saying? Like Wendy went to Philly, she went so to Power 99. Right. And then I went to Philly a year later, I was on Philly 103.9. And, and then I left Philly and, then and came, Tracy, okay, and what happened? Can you, so Tracy let Star fire me off the show for no reason at all, just because I wouldn't laugh at his jokes and go along with his shenanigans. And Wendy <laughs> called me that day. Okay. No, look, she had to whisper because like, really, Kevin did not want us talking to each other. So she Hi, called Jonesy. me and she goes, Joe. Hi, Jonesy. This is right. This she goes, Joe. She one. called me Jones. 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 Are you okay? Right. Um, I need you to, um, do you have any any prospects? And I'm like, no, I don't know what I'm gonna do. She goes, call Golden Boy in Philly okay. and tell him Wendy told you to call. Okay, okay. So I called Golden Boy and I called the people over at 1039. Okay. I told them Wendy told me to call. Mm -hmm. Everyone in Philly revered Wendy. So right. I knew that was leverage. I sent my stuff over. Uh -huh. And the people at 1039, they responded right away and was like, can you please come down and meet us? And and that's what happened. And then I went down to do middays. Okay, okay. You were and just like, kind of like auditioning in a way? It never got to midday. No, I never had to audition. I sent my tape in and they asked okay. me, to come. they loved it. And they wanted to meet me in person to make sure that I wasn't crazy or that I was crazy enough but I was supposed right. to do middays. And mm -hmm. then when they met me, they said, we would like to, you to do mornings. Right. Because, like the money that you're asking for, we would right. we could only make that money in morning drive. And I didn't want to do it, but I'm glad I did because it made me the first black woman to host my own morning show in radio and not be the sidekick. You know what I mean? Thank you. Toast it up to me. Toast it up. And I'm still alive. And so back to Wendy, right? Uh huh. So of Which course her movie I called her and I thanked her. But again, right? Yeah, but yeah, she's got <laughs> commercials. Let me live. So I, <laughs> I is where I wanna be. Or whatever. Oh. But again, we're like sneaking in places. Like I'm popping up in her comedy shows. I'm popping up at her comedy shows and we have to like literally sneak in the bathroom to talk because Kevin is just like, he was really controlling then. And you guys will see in the movie tomorrow that nothing changed, it actually got worse. Yeah. Scal, lifetime. did you ever witness Kevin hit Wendy? No, Wendy. Um, I said Wendy. No, Jonesy, never. Okay. Because in the movie, she says that he never put his hands on her. Yeah, no. But I never no, I heard other no. No, oh, I heard okay. otherwise from I heard otherwise from people that worked at other stations, but whatever. Oh, okay. And nah. I heard that he was going that that at Fox. No, the movie talks about at Fox, him running mm -hmm. up in there and wilding out in front of all the executives and being threatening oh, wow. and intimidating and stuff. You guys will what? see it tomorrow. You you know what Jonesy Wendy I have and to Kev, say, it is a great movie. It's a great watch. There's two of them. You know what? There's uh, a biopic Jonesy, and then Wendy there's a documentary. Kev, um, documentary gave me unmitigated life. Um, so. Wendy and Kev were really cool to me. It was just me and my shenanigans that kind of like um, 
uh, my shenanigans. That's all I'll say. But they were cool to me. Anonymous in the Q&A has questions. Go ahead, PD. Hey, hey. Yo, Anonymous is getting busy, Scallon Jones. So first question from Anonymous. Miss Jones, do you feel vindicated that the narrative from your book has been proven true? Which narrative, Anonymous? Which one? Tell me. Type it, please. Type it in the, in the chat now or come back. But in the meantime, we're going to move on to the, the second question from Anonymous. In Angie's book, Angie says that the fight was because Wendy kept saying on the air that her then boyfriend was gay. Hmm. Oh, wait. Okay. So if her, if they're talking about Nokio from Drew Hill, and I'm not exactly sure because I didn't even know until you just said it that Angie even had a book, but I know she had a baby. I don't know, but if you're wearing black nail polish and eyeliner and pursing your lips, I don't know. Skell? What's up, Angie? Was Wendy off if she said that, that if, if that's what the guy is doing with, I mean, wink. Jones, you know what? I don't, I don't, like I who didn't. said, who said I came with notes and don't know nothing? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> who, said, who said I came with notes and don't know nothing? Let me see. Everybody. So Jones. Go ahead, DB. What was the next question? Um, well, desirable accessories says you look cute jonesy but hey boo stacy i'll see you tomorrow morning at my at our founders day event she accessorizes down if you're ever in philly or the south jersey area you better follow desirables accessories and that's desirables with a z in it i think that stacy put the website in the chat because people really let me show you this is one of the things that i got i'm not wearing it because my wrist is a little swollen tonight because I'm drinking and I'm not gonna stop drinking just to fit the bracelet, but you can see how beautiful and dainty it is. Jonesy, what are you drinking? There's like six of them. This is what a bitch ass on? white wine. I'm ready to step it up to a red wine blend with bourbon barrels. The producer will be looking for the check from Desirable for that little um, sponsorship <laughs> break. I'm moving right on to Adrian Carter. What happened after the government went to the Bahamas to get you, Jones, after hearing the hit that Calvin put out on you. Apparently they've Ooh, been listening Calvin, to Wendy. Cause yep. Um, so the government didn't do shit. They didn't do any, and I didn't do anything cause my husband at the time said he was going to take care of it. And he was like, he was more in that whole world. So he, when he said he had it and then I watched him toss the dude out of my pool chair, I knew he had it. Josie, how long were you on Aruba before you found out? That might have been day one or day two. But here's the thing. Whoa. I I really could have been taken out. And this is what's messed up. This only came out. Um, the, 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 the people at BLS in Wendy's show supposedly knew about this because later on it came out in a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But... I, I feel a way about that because you have to put your own human decency in front of your job. And nobody from that camp bothered to say anything or send a little kite or nothing. And because I was going into work so early and it was dark outside and I'm a woman by myself and I'm not, I'm doing all I can just to get there halfway, you know, presentable. I'm not paying attention to the gunman. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful. And Wendy and I have actually never had a confrontation about that, but Envy, DJ Envy from The Breakfast Club, my new co-host, my reunion co-host on Monday, he stepped to Kev and Kev said, tell Jonesy that's bullshit, that's all a lie. Of course you're gonna say it's a lie, but so we never really resolved it. And right after that, I left radio and wound up going back to Philly to do radio again. So any more questions in the chat? Don't Envy, forget. Envy. Miss Jones reunion say, show on Monday with DJ Envy, me and Michael Sean. When you hear us say Kiss FM, take a drink of whatever you've got beside you because that kiss means we care. So, so Jones, we have another question from A. Carter. <laughs> what happened to her 
I'm assuming Wendy. What happened to Wendy's assistant, Nicole? So I think Nicole is the one that sued. Uh, ask her, is Nicole the one that's Nicole Spence? Yep, she's the one. She's another one. So she's the one that knew about the hit and only brought it up in her court hearing when she was trying to sue Wendy and Kevin. Supposedly, allegedly, Kevin had been hitting on her and she told him to stop and he kept on. So that's when she went to the station management, allegedly, to sue. And I hear that they wound up settling out of court because allegedly she had proof of threesomes that I need my sound effect. Da -da 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 -da. <gasps> that she had proof of threesomes that she and Wendy and Kevin had been partaking in and BLS ain't want to smoke. And that's why that shit went away. But in the interim, when they got before the judge, she said, oh, and by the way, he tried to put a hit on her rival DJ at the other station. That's when her lawyer, Ken Thompson, who's dead now, called me and told me, and I'm like, Ken, shouldn't you have told me when the block was hot? He was like, yeah, but I had a case going. Once again, niggas taking care of themselves, protecting their jobs instead of trying to save a life. Save the dolphins. Kiss FM. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. I can't even. The dolphins are in Miami and we never worked in Miami. <laughs> I am very, I'm very, very excited by the way, Skell, to be back in touch with you. And I feel like tonight is a warm up to the okay. reunion show with me and Envy and Michael Sean on Monday. Could I be a guest one day and just be like, Jonesy, all of your shenanigans throughout your career have led you to this brand new show called the Miss Jones Reunion Show on the YouTube with Michael Sean, who I know from Philly and DJ Envy, who's on The Breakfast Club. And I, I used to do um, mixtapes. I would be on uh, DJ Envy's mixtapes when he was, was doing mixtapes back in the day. Really? I had no idea. Wow, yeah. okay. Yep. Everybody's what up, connected. Envy? Yeah, everybody's what up, connected. Envy? Envy? So Envy? If, if you're just joining us, this is Conversations with Miss Jones. We're talking about the Wendy movies. There's two of them, the biopic and the documentary, which I was saying before, the documentary gave me life because when she starts, mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like in her dressing room and she has a box of, or no, she doesn't have a box of tissues, but she winds up asking someone for a tissue because when they mm -hmm. start talking to her, she has a glass of wine or something, it might be champagne. And she's, she's serious and then she gets sad and then she gets snarky and then she starts crying. It's like so Joan Crawford she gave me mm -hmm. Betty Davis, Joan Crawford, all of that in one. And um, so the documentary, obviously, is going to be after. Pay after attention to that, because that's when she gives it to that bastard Kevin. Oh, she lets him have it. Mm -hmm. Jonesy, you saw the documentary already? Red light, Scal. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Why are you fault. trying to send up the cops to my motherfucking... <laughs> Don't worry Jonesy, about what I said. I know, I know you're in there. Put your hands up. I know you're in there. <laughs> guys, 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 if you have questions, um, you can raise your hands to ask a question in the chat. And we love you oh, for chatting. Right. Thank you for being here. Kiss FM. Drink what you've got. That kiss means we care. Call in 97. Uh, That's Jones, right. Hello. Uh, Jones and Scott, we have a question from Facebook because we don't want to leave those people out that are watching live. What up, Facebook? Know, when's the last time you, either Jones and or Skell, spoke to Wendy? Why? You trying to delegitimize my show tonight? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> or your show that starts on Monday called the Miss Jones Reunion Show on YouTube with Mike Jones, DJ Envy. So the last time I spoke to, to Wendy was, I think I was visiting my sister who produces The View and Wendy was about to be a guest on The View and we were all in the elevator together. So that was like- Wow. 2000, what, like 10 maybe or 11, 10, maybe 10 or nine. Wow. And, but it was real quick and it was funny because the elevator was completely quiet and everyone's, it was like a commercial, everyone's facing forward. And she's like, 
How are you, Jones? <laughs> and what'd you say, Josie? I'm fine. I would be. How are ah. you? Good. Right, because remember, we still never resolved that murder plot shit. But I'm trying to be professional because I'm at my sister's job. So okay. that's as far as it got. We still haven't had resolution. And honestly, I've stopped waiting for other people to give me my resolution and shit because mm -hmm. sometimes you wait and then you finally come face to face with that person and either they, one, don't remember, two, don't care to remember, or three, they lie. And then you get mad all over again. Mm -hmm, so I've mm -hmm. learned to just have my own resolution and do my own process. And um, and yeah, so that's why I'm like, I respect Wendy's whole journey. And yes. while I was excited, I'm very excited about all these tapes of her older shows that I have. Uh huh. Um, Wendy did a lot of racy stuff. Actually, can you play the clip producer of, um, I think she was going after Bobby Brown. And this is when Bobby had gotten arrested or something and Whitney was still alive. Whoa. Like, the judge brings the gavel down, boom. You have until the end of the business day to day to come up with $63,000 for back child support. We're, put, we're putting you in jail for 90 days. So yeah, sure. He, can, he could call Whitney and whatever, 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 whatever. Never, but more importantly, and, and I know what you're saying, because you're saying what I'm saying. What kind of finances has he ever brought to that cipher? Correct. How much stuff did he does he have that he can easily go pawn? Can you pause it? Because I want to say, see, this is why you on TV looking like the Statue of Liberty and fainting and falling out because you went after people a lot. <laughs> we both did. But Jonesy, did you go after people too on your radio show? Shut up, like Scout. Red light. Red Green light. light. Sorry, my Red. bad. My bad. Kiss FM. My bad. Um, see, I, it's my, not about, listen. I, all right. It's I about my Wendy's. Mistakes. It's about Wendy's show tomorrow. It's about your show on Monday. And right now at eight o'clock on that, a Friday please. night, it's about me drinking Mountain Dew. But now. bigger than all of that, listen, but bigger than all of that, the only reason why I played that clip is because we got to put it in perspective. Yes, the love is real. Yes, I admire Wendy for her journey, but right. sometimes there's a lesson to be learned that stuff. We just can't skip past it because now Kevin embarrassed her, humiliated her, and we're feeling sorry for her. You got to own, you know what I mean? You got to own the seeds that you planted. And this is just one clip that I just happened to come across today. I've got about a thousand tapes over here and she was going after Whitney's husband. Now we see your husband was kind of having his hand in a cookie jar too. And um, I don't know, any questions in the chat? Yeah, uh, wait, Vanetta. Vanetta says she remembers, wait, dang it just went so quickly. Said, Anisha, uh, Vanessa, my bad. I remember and, when Jonesy used to drag Beyonce and Miss Tina. Do not have the beehive start tonight, Vanetta. Jones. <laughs> Listen, I did not Jonesy, drag them. Why not. did you drag people? No, because no one's above the dragation. Not me, not Wendy, not Kevin, obviously, not Beyonce or her mother. And when your mother dresses up like a grade school child and wants to come on the playground and fight, <laughs> your mother can catch it too. Whoa. I'm just saying. And Jonesy, I, I, I have a question for you, what? Jonesy. All okay. right, my bad, my bad. When people go on the playground to fight, what time is it? Like three o'clock or 3.15? Three o'clock at the playground. And she rolled up at the station. Honestly, she didn't even really say much. She just was like, thank you for keeping my daughter's name in your mouth. I love hearing you talk about her every day. I said, I'm glad you can hear. And this is when you were in Philadelphia. No, this was on Hot 97. This is what happened. Oh, okay. So Ebro, uh, and, them, Ebro and them had some deal. Beyonce was supposed to be doing some promotion for the station. Nobody okay. told me. So I noticed that at like 11 a.m., they're all trying to rush me out. They're like, oh, what time are you leaving? Go get your weekend started. When usually mm -hmm. 
they want me to stay around and do slave work and cut all the promotions and all the commercials and all that. Right. So I'm right. like, what's right. going on? So then all of a sudden, I feel like fans blowing. And I look down the hall and I see this gorgeous, tall, statuesque songstress and her hair is blowing and she's got an entourage. Right. And it's Beyonce. And I'm like, these wow. motherfuckers are trying yes. to get me out of the building before Beyonce could get here because wow. they thought. Josie, I'll be I was right back. Start- okay. They thought I was going to start mess. You see how I can talk to myself? That's the art of radio. They thought I was going to start shit with Beyonce, but I didn't really have a particular beef. You just comment on things you would see day to day on everybody. So when Beyonce and the, oh my gosh, she looked so beautiful. She was so hot that day. I tell you, it was fans blowing because the hair was like, now, you know, so we hugged. But I told her I don't do the hug thing. That was bitchy. That was bitchy of me. Hmm. Josie, hmm. have another question from the Q&A. Would you like to dig in? First, I have to be at one for a moment. Beyonce, I'm sorry I was bitchy for no reason that day. I was in a bad marriage. Wait, you weren't even married yet. But wait, that was a necessary bitchiness. I'll have to make it right with her one day. Because you just can't be nasty to people just because. She was trying to give me a hug and I reached out my hand. That wasn't nice. Okay, owned. Head, what's the question? From Tanya Brown, do you think Calvin or Kevin was jealous of your relationship with Wendy? And how much damage has your relationship sustained? So I will say, I think Kelvin was one of those husbands that wanted complete control. And the only way you can successfully obtain that is to isolate your spouse from everybody. So I just happen to be one of everybody. And those of you that have been in relationships where the, your partner has been controlling, whether it's a man and a controlling girl that don't want you talking to no females or vice versa, you know what the isolation is. They don't want you with your female cousins or your male cousins. They don't want anybody around. So I kind of understood that. And I watched Wendy once we were in Philly and they were, Kevin was, this is when I first got to Philly and Kevin was trying to manage me. And we were supposed to meet when he was supposed to meet Wendy in front of a jewelry store. And when we got there, she was there already, but she wanted to come over to the truck and say hello to me. So we hugged and we're talking. Kevin went into the jewelry store and I guess Wendy didn't move fast enough. He comes charging out the store, spit flying out his mouth. What the fuck? Hurry up. I'm in here fucking waiting for you. Cause I guess he needed somebody to pay for the jewels. And he just, and she jumps and she goes, I'm sorry, Jones, I'll talk to you later. And she just ran in and I just, you know, I don't, I never liked bullies. So Kiss FM, Kiss means we care. Drink when you hear Kiss FM. I just want to shout out to Jay Smith, uh, Jonesy. See, um, on this thing, they're like the things that's coming down at the bottom of my screen. Are you getting that also? I'm, I'm lucky to be getting you because I'm on, <laughs> I'm on my, we did a last switch out. I'm on my son's MacBook from school. Jalen oh, saved okay. the day, everybody. Give it up so for Jalen. I'm glad I, I'm, in my stomach last month. Yeah. I'm glad I do so have I paper so I can write down. Okay, I got you, Jonesy. I got you. I was, I was just like, um, this girl, I'm Doris. I'm afraid to touch anything on this little boy's computer. Doris says, what's up, um, Jonesy? Um, and I say, like yes, Jalen. That's Doris. We got a shout out to Jay Smith. And I saw something that said, why did I get fired from Wendy's show? It said did something you get fired like, from the show or did you just leave? Um, well, that whole situation was, okay, I started at Kiss FM with her. We moved to Hot 97. She went to Philly. I went to Philly. She came back to New York to BLS. She called me and said she would like for me to come, you know, press the buttons at BLS. So now Vinny's at BLS. I get to BLS. Oh, Scale, hey, where you been? I've been in Philly. So now I'm thinking like, oh my God, like I'm in New York, da 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 yada, 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 you know, like that. But like I said, my shenanigans, my foolishness led me 
off of her show. So I wasn't actually fired. Well, yeah, that does make me fired, I think, right? <laughs> and this is the show of recognition. <laughs> and but anyway, they moved me, they moved me from Wendy's show to the Steve Harvey morning show on BLS when Steve came to New York. And then I only stayed on Steve's show for like three months. And then they moved me to Born Harper's Quiet Storm show, all behind the scenes and everything. But I was like, look, I just came from Philly, so I'm hot. How was your, like, how was your experience in, in Philly? What, Cause you went to Philly, to, cause you always wanted to be on air. Was, did I you always have- wanted to be, huh? No, go ahead. Was it a good experience? Did they love you? Did oh, you- it was a great experience. It was like, oh, you know, like, yo, that's that's Skeletor from 97 down in Philly. So I was on from six to 10. It was just all about me. And you know, all of us wanted to be all about us, all about us. And being from 97, where I was mostly in the background and filling in for Fat Man Scoop, I was just like, okay, Philly, I'm going to blow it up, blow it up. So I blew it up from six to 10 nice. every night. But and, then and the contract say, wasn't renewed. And then I went to BLS. That's always the case at 1039. They never got their shit together. Um, but I have to say, let's give it up to our girl, Wendy, who's yes. has a movie, who has two movies tomorrow. On Wendy, Life I haven't Show. seen you in so long, but because I love you. I miss you. This is why we're giving it up for her, because we all benefited from the association with her ass. And had we not been associated, I don't care if you were just touching buttons or you were a fake coach or whatever. Right, right. You got the association (laughs) and you were able to eat off of that. So we got to pay homage. Yes. And you know what? To to the queen. To um, Jonesy from Wendy, I got so much, like Ralph McDaniels put me on video music box. And then... Um, pressing the buttons, Tracy put me on 97, and then I'm working with Ed Lover. With I'm working and with Flex. Right. I'm working with you and Fat Man Scoop in the morning. But yeah. I've always been type of like, I'm ready to party. And I was just, it was 19, what, 97, 98. So I was in every single club in the city. So you were that supposed was- to be. You were supposed to be because you were a young man living your life, living your dream in New York. Hey. Don't apologize. Oh. Hey, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you were good at what you did, which is why hey. you kept getting hired oh. back and forth, which is what I say about myself. People talk all the talk. Oh, she got fired. She got fired. The judge said, if she's so bad, why y'all keep hiring her back? Right, right, Jonesy. Sorry, that was the last two. So... <laughs> On your show, you me to sign a contract and then when they fall on your out of show, love me, they don't want to. On, on your show that starts this Monday on YouTube, uh, Miss Jones' um, reunion show on YouTube with Michael Sean and DJ Envy, which starts February 1st. Um, are you going to recap this whole weekend and the Wendy movie as a part of your show, like a segment? Absolutely not. It's all about me. Wendy will be over at that point. <laughs> I've got my own catching up to do with Envy, okay? <laughs> this is a- Envy, listen, Envy, DJ Envy. I, 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 I love Wendy. That's why she's got my Friday night and she's going to have our Saturday night tomorrow because we right. I'm hearing we might be back tomorrow at seven or we might just replay this. But okay. I've got let's, other let's to talk be about here. because I had my own experience with Envy and, um, and Michael Sean. And right. And what up, Michael Shaw? Right. Seven. And so we've got reuniting oh to do. Like God. this These is the season of reunion. Open. I'm ripping up the notes. My one wish open. that I can get everyone to have a reunion. Like I want Jane to reunite. I love um uh uh all the girl groups. Right. Right. Black girls. Everyone reunite. It's the season for us. They're gonna be thirsty for a concert once we come out of COVID. Let it be yours. Right. Hell. Let it be mine. Right. Speaking of COVID. Any questions in the chat? You know what? Speaking of COVID. That's why. I'm going to take this and shut it. Right? That Kiss FM (laughs) means we care. And COVID has had me in this house. Why are you wearing a shield in the house? My bad. 
If My somebody bad. in there got it, you already got it. <laughs> it came back negative. Oh no. Oh well. Oh well. Stay positive and test negative. That's all I could ask, but I love your Josie, property. Josie, um, can I ask you a question seriously about High 97 and um, the whole tsunami thing? Can I get an understanding of that? You cannot, but you can tune in on Monday for it all. Okay, what do I have to tune into? Dag, I ripped up my notes. I don't have any paper. You, you okay. tune into the Miss Jones, DJ Envy, and Michael Sean reunion. Where Is we that what it's called? Yeah, on you, nigga, you've been promoting it all no, night. No, I'm only okay. joking. <laughs> Shenanigans, shenanigans. Red light, bitch, red light. High 97, you call it 97. Um, yeah, I'm saving all tsunami talk, all uh, all death threat talk. Um, okay. <laughs> but Method Man ain't mean nothing by it. He's just, he's a lawyer now. On TV. Whoa, like, shout out to Meth doing it on that power. Oh, I love him. On Speaking of Meth, listen, you like my little segue? So did you hear the gossip about Wendy uh, supposedly saying she and Meth and Man had sex? Did you guys hear it? Can you please tell me exactly what was said? Can you go in the chat and tell Josie, me? Josie, where are you getting there? I, I got to do more research. Come you on. Do. you. No, I can't even reveal my source, but Envy told me. <laughs> DJ Envy, Envy, Breakfast Club. Cause we get not Angela Yee. We get our shit together for Monday, so we be on this bat phone all morning, all times tonight. Getting our I'm shit. I'm calling together. in on Monday morning. I'm calling in. I don't even know. You're gonna have to call my cell phone because we don't have no phone set up. It's a YouTube show. But so to the point. I know. I'm just. Please? I'm calling in. But you can, we'll pop you in on the Zoom, um, on the on the Zoom if you want to. Okay. All right. So wait now. Uh, DB, is somebody is anybody telling me what's going on with the Wendy Williams Method Man thing? Because I have the answer to that. I was there for that. We do. Anonymous is at it again. Anonymous is all the rage. Anonymous has given me unmitigated life. Anonymous okay. Is asking, did Wendy really lay it down with meth? He yep. thought he was down with Mary. Mary? Yes. You said Mary? Probably because of the duo. They did that song together. No, that, no. You're all no. I need. Wendy told me out her own mouth that she, I guess I have to say allegedly for the sake of, I don't want to get shut down before I start up. But she told me out her mouth that she and Meth got it going in the back of a truck. And she said he provided the weed, so why not? She said that, I swear, on my mother's grave, she said that. But, wow. what? no look, are we judging backs of trucks? <laughs> I mean, we're backs all home. Backs of trucks? Whoa. I can think of a thousand worse places <laughs> that I've done it. Whoa. Let's be On Coney Island. Oh. Remember the boardwalk? <laughs> Coney Island. Remember Jones Beach after the Greek Fest? There are numerous places that are way <laughs> worse than the back of that man's truck. Come on now. Mother has lived. All of us mothers have lived. Josie. Oh, it's, my God. It's a, it's a new conversation. It's a new conversation. I'm grown on my own and living in my truth. There's no shame. I have, I'm owning shit. Oh, well, oh, well. I used to love when you said that. Oh, well, oh, oh well. well. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, yes. Yes. oh, well. It's coming Monique, back. Something. Jonesy, Monique said you took it back to Jones Beach, the Greek fest. <laughs> I think you just said. Monique, she did it. Shout out. Greek fest. <laughs> All the Good Divine up, Nine and Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. Oh, and, congratulations, Kamala. And, and honorary and Joe Q -Dog, Biden. Joe, look, honorary Q Dog Joe Biden. <laughs> ah. Do you know what? One of you black fraternities, y'all need to listen. Listen. Okay, that's Alpha Phi credit. Alpha. And give me my uh, credit when you do. Y'all need, need to offer Joe Biden an honorary membership in one of the black frats. I see him more as an alpha too. 
less of a Q and more of an alpha. I see him more as a Kappa. No. Wait, a Kappa from up north or a down south Kappa? Kappa Alpha Psi Joe Biden. No, Just I'm saying give him Do you see him down as south a, or north? Because um, there's a difference. There's a difference in the way they carry in the noops up north and the noops down south. Red light, okay. red light, red light. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Red light. Sorry. Yeah, this, I, Sorry. <laughs> red light, red light. So we do have 19 questions in the QA. Oh, we're one, running behind. One no. is probably <laughs> for Monday for the Miss Jones reunion question, but I'll just throw it out there from Roberto Hunt Jr. Miss Jones, what's the status of your relationship with Ebro? Hi, <laughs> Roberto. My relationship with Ebro is fine. A beautiful boy. No, is look. It true that he had played a part in your firing. No, I, de I did not get fired. <laughs> I was saving this. Oh, wait. Hold on, the baby Jalen yeah, yeah. is, is giving me a charger. Like 15, yeah. I love my son. He's so attentive. He's having a sleepover and still came in to save his mother from complete. Yay, Jalen. <laughs> complete destruction. Wait, what do I unplug? Wait, hold on, guys. I got to hold on. Okay. So while Jonesy holds on, just remember Wendy, uh, the movie Lifetime, uh, the documentary. Then you got to remember. Um, Jonesy, Miss Jones reunion show Monday morning, uh, YouTube with Michael Sean and DJ Envy, Envy, Envy. And um, if you guys would like to check me out, uh, well connected with Skeletor, uh, blog talk radio.com. That's what I've been doing every now and then, just to kind of keep abreast uh, with the pop culture and everything like that. Um, Skel, I love it. I'm so glad to have you back. Thank you, Jonesy. Oh, I really am. You're a breath of Thank fresh you. air and the and the culture needs you. The culture needs us. But Roberto, I never was fired from Hot 97. I never got a chance to explain because I went from there straight to Philly. Never got fired. And I was going to save this for Monday, but I'll just let you know, I actually stayed a year longer than I wanted to because remember, I had just gotten married and we wanted to start a <sighs> Like we wanted to have another child and, um, and, but big boy wasn't ready. And so who's, they came who's big boy. So big boy is who they replaced my show with big boy oh, from um, LA big yeah, boy neighborhood. It was, it was a colossal failure. Cause he's just so not New York, but, but his show is good. It wasn't here. Just oh. like certain shit don't fly in New York. You know that don't play okay. the game cause you know. Right, 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 right. Tom Joyner was a failure here. D.L. Hughley, not really popping like that. Certain okay. shows just ain't New York. So a big boy show was a failure, but I never got fired. My contract ended. They asked me to stay an extra year. I did, and I told them, guys, I'm done. If you remember, I was pregnant with my second child. Summer okay. Jam. Okay. okay. So my relationship with Ebro, like I said, is abusive as it's always been, and I love it. Whoa. <laughs> we have you an love it. Wow. I do. Because you know what? Jones, you. You're he dramatic. Is he is. I am who I am. Right. I know right. that in order to get him to do certain things, I have to manipulate. He knows that in order to get me to pick up, he has to give me a birthday shout out on the radio, whatever. When's your what birthday? When's your birthday, Jones? I am a Scorpio. It's October 24th. October 24th. Okay, my birthday is February 9th. I'm an Aquarius. Oh, wow, you got a birthday up. coming up. So we've got to do a birthday party for you here. Hey. Hi, hi. Hey. Shout out, party, so. uh, shout out to Ebro. I think I met him one time. You know, I had came back from Philly. And when I came back from Philly, I was always in touch with Tracy on the phone in Philly. Like Tracy. Tracy like, was our boss. She was our program director. Tracy was our program director. At Hot 97. After I left Hot 97, I got my own show in Philly on 103.9. But I was just so New York in Philly that it was so crazy. I didn't even know anything about Philly. But anyway, I'd be like, Tracy, da 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 da, calling her back and forth. She'd be that, like, That's a fine line because if you go to Philly and you do too much New York, they ain't fucking with you. But if you go yeah, to Philly I, and you do enough New York, they fucking all the way with you because. Philly just likes real shit. They don't care. Right. Don't no, in there Jones, like, I'm from New York. They don't want to hear that shit. I was kind of just like, 
I'm on the radio, Philly 103.9. I'm signing off at 10 o'clock. I'm on my way to New York. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? Side. I get back six o'clock the next day, like, Side last bar. night. Got- huh? Jonesy? I had to switch real quick. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Am I frozen? Am I- okay, we're going back to clips. But I come back the next day and be like, yo, last night it was popping in New York. They be like, talk about Philly. I l- listen, they, I love my experience in Philly. I had a lot of I did too. I did too. In yo. Philly. I had my first child in Philly. I became the first black woman to host morning radio. Yes, I was Philly. so proud of you. I got, thank you. I got the citation of Philly. I, then I have you get the key to the city. They gave me the key to the city. There's a street named after me in Philly. All right, that last one's a lie. Uh, <laughs> uh, Josie Monique in Philly says they missed you in Philly. I miss y'all already know. Let me tell you something. That was Monique, the best Monday experience. morning YouTube. Monique Jonesy Union show. And I'm not just saying this. That move to Philly, I was unsure at first because I had never been out of New York. Mm-hmm. That moved to, and I left in the middle of the night. And Wendy talks about it. I packed up that little Mercedes truck and I drove in the middle of the night into my little Corman Suites. That's uh, what's up, Josie. Uh, corporate See, rental. Grinding and hustling. But All right, no, Josie. Philly, now, no, you are not going to cut this story off. <laughs> All right. Going to Philly was the best part of my life. The best part of my life. And that's pre having children. Right. That shit is still out for debate. But my best experience was my life living in Philly and being embraced by them. And I will say that hands down. New York, I'm always going to be a New York girl, but Philly, Philly loved me up. That's what's up. And Jonesy C. Craig, I see, says they definitely miss you in Philly. Now, my question was, what part of Philly, like South Philly, down the bottom? I live- um, what? No, um, where is the street named after you? North Philly, South oh, Philly. That was a lie. Red light, motherfucker. I know. <laughs> I hate it. I can't take you no more. Please feel free to drink whatever you've got, whether it be bleach, whether it be, whether it be <laughs> I don't care. That kiss means we care. You take a drink right now. Mountain drink all, the bleach. Drink all the bleach you need to. And I'm eating Sour Patches, too. Wait, my band Squid. Big shout out to Syracuse University alumni on this bitch. Squid said, Syracuse? Yes, I threw up in my mouth at that Method Man Wendy story. He said, catching a bit of your show, can't stay long. Make sure you apologize to Beyonce. I did, I did. Hit me back sometime this weekend. Okay, got you, Squid. Love you. Hey, Jonesy. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry to um, cut you off, but I have ripped up all my notes since my notes are not telling me anything and I really don't know anything. But um, uh, yeah, I ripped them up because I'm just on here. Wendy, when I tell you her um, her documentary tomorrow, she's like, she's she's she (laughs) it's like she's she goes from from serious to it's like she's thinking out loud. She's like, damn you, Kevin. We had it all. Oh, but okay, no, okay. you had to. I just she really the, got uh, with it. And then the, she snatches herself together. I just love the drama Go in ahead. Wendy's voice. And when she's like, oh, Jonesy, like, you got you to sit down. You, you got to listen to this. It's just. Uh, Everything always urgent. <laughs> urgent. And it is. You got to go. We gotta go. Oh, hurry up. Right, hurry up. right. Josie. And you know right. what she told me? She always gave me great womanly advice, even though she said that she never would. Mm, she always okay. said, I'm never going to, she said, I'm never gonna be that woman to help another mm-hmm. woman come in and get my job because none of the other women, the older women, helped me get mine. Mm-hmm. She would give mm-hmm. me little tidbits like how to play the game and things to look out for and just things, just like, no, Jonesy, you and Wendy's relationship was really, really good because I was there sitting in the studio with the both of you. And it was 
it was just fun. I'm sure she gave you, like you said, womanly advice and everything like that. Um, she, she came through when I needed it with that job information, though. That's a yeah. real bitch because she is a great person. She she helped me live. Like you know what I mean. Nobody else was calling saying, use their name and call right. old boy. Right. Which you know what? I, um, a lot of people would ask me like, uh, Scale, you work with Wendy. Is she really like this? Is she really like? And I'm like, she's just, she is, she's just doing her job and her job. And she always says it is to, if your business drops on Broadway, she's going to scoop it up and bring it to the radio. You remember yeah, she would now, say stuff like but that? But now she's fucking dropping on stage as a Statue of Liberty. And that's why we have the conversations with Miss Jones. It's what it is. It goes around. But but what I will say, <laughs> red light. You ain't have to say she's dropping. I'm look, just give me the give me the ticket. I'm taking the light. What I will say, <laughs> pull over, pull over no, in that jeep. No, no catch me, if you, catch drop. me if you can, catch me if you can. I'm taking this light. What I okay. will say is that I feel like we've all made it to the other side, which is why I'm encouraging these reunions because when you're in it. You don't think that there's another shot. And oftentimes in Wendy words, that you get one shot to make it. That's not mm -hmm. true. Cause we're watching her re-emerge from the ashes and you guys are watching me or will be watching. Well, this is a part of it cause I'll be doing these watch shows and as long as Lifetime or BET or whoever has them, this is gonna be my shit. And you have my word to keep it honest and, and do my research and make it as entertaining as I can for you guys. But I'm re-emerging and I'm coming back because um, we we need each other and it, it should be okay to laugh at each other's mistakes and still be able to move on and be successful. Why you do it all the time? Go ahead, next. Oh my God, Jonesy, you sound just like you're on Hot 97 right now and I'm sitting next to you pressing the buttons. What sound effect would you press <laughs> after that comment? Uh, I would press like, Oh, the Homer Simpson one. Boring. I will fuck you up. Don't play with me, Scout. Just take Boring. a drink of whatever you got. Take, drink the bleach. Drink the bleach. Shout out to Rochelle and Jay Smith and C. Craig. I see all the names coming down. But since I ripped up all the papers, I got to like write on these little sheets now. I can't. For the, my friends that are on the chat, I can't see shit because this is Jalen's computer. So y'all can continue to text me on my phone. And I'll Monique, go ahead. See, Monique says she can't. Monique, yes, you can, and you will. <laughs> <laughs> and you will drink, and you will drink. Kiss FM. And you will drink to Kiss FM. You will take it to the head. You will take Jay it to Smith. the head, and you will show up on Monday. Jay Smith says I can't either. Yes, you will. You will I, take listen, that red light. Listen, everybody listening in the chat. <laughs> Aren't you glad we're all back together? Aren't you glad we've all not changed? <laughs> no, I don't like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we have a promo picture. I don't know if our producer can show it. Me, Michael, Sean, and Envy, and it says, not them again. <laughs> yes, bitch. Oh, uh, that's crazy. That's funny. <laughs> not them. Oh, I don't like them. Wait. Well, I'm a listen. Says, we had a rotten president, a rotten economy, and a damn COVID virus. COVID. What, look, what can happen next? It's the return of the Bitch Jones and the Morning Show reunion. <laughs> Monday morning. Just when you February think first. It's any worse? Here we come. Black History Month. Miss hey, Jones. Sheila. Sheila Garvin Glover. That's my girl. My girl. My girl. We met in Philly. She from Trenton. Ooh, ooh. You know what I appreciate? What up, Sheila? Jonesy, I always just. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking over you. Okay, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Wendy trained you well. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from Wendy. I was like, oh, like, oh, she said that. I'm going to say that my way. Did she ever say something about you that you didn't want? Oh, wait, wait. Um, producer, play the clip. Wait, let me see what. Um... Wait. Boys or wait. interns? Kiss FM. So this is a clip of Wendy <laughs> talking about one of her interns, one of her interns had happened to have some surgery. Mm -hmm. And this is the clip from that. Go ahead. Okay. You know what I did? You know what I 
that did keep, and I'm surprised she didn't say, please don't share it with the show. One of our interns, and I'm not going to say which one, told me that she had a nose job. And yeah, uh, I found out that too yesterday. Yeah, and did you notice that? Oh, that's already. Never said, please don't say anything. I'm just sharing this just because you were just talking about, you know, little Kim. Right. We were talking about little Kim behind the scenes in the cut, you know. And she said, I had a nose job. I would have never guessed that's a very tasteful nose job. And I asked her, did she get it done by a black surgeon? She said, then she went to a white surgeon who specializes in black noses and, you know, and she needed a bridge. And she she had the, you know, the, the spread nostrils on the side. So she had them slimmed down. And she said, it's still swollen. And I said, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Pause it, pause it, oh. pause it. Asian in her oh, family. Pause it. Can we just, <laughs> can we just Don't clap? Me. Wait, can we just clap, clap for how, like, racially wrong that whole conversation was. oh my god Jonesy like, when, when she was saying that I was like <laughs> oh my god she would not be able to say that right now like do she like that was so that whole thing was just so racially wrong from the widespread nose and the black doctor doing yeah I thought doctor. she was talking about I thought she was talking about my nose I'm like because I got a big <laughs> black nose like it is all over my face take a drink if you too have a big black nose <laughs> wait I'm gonna take like five drinks because my nose is five times bigger than everyone else's what up Doris is we have to get back to the window we have to get back to the uh, Wendy back. movie, Jonesy, that's coming on, no, on no, Lifetime. No, Wendy, listen, Wendy got her money. I'm trying to get mine. Go back to the, <laughs> go back. Let's not get it fucked up. <laughs> Let's not forget what this YouTube, is really Monday about. Monday morning, Black History Month, Miss Jones, Michael Sean, DJ Envy. I'm the Breakfast Club. That's right. Let's not forget what it's really about. Go back what up, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. She doesn't have like the Asian... It, you'd, you'd have to tell me if there was an agent in her family, but okay, I see that. But see, she didn't say anything. But out of respect, because, you know, she forgot to say something. Maybe she wanted me to say something. I don't know. This is so windy on saying, the radio. Oh, can we say that? Because actually, people would love to know what that feels like. You know how much that hurts. Ow. How you feeling? How you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> um, dear Wendy, I heard you talking a lot. I heard you talking a lot about infidelity on your show and during advice hours and whatnot. And you always tell people to bail, or you often tell people to Jonesy, bail. this is Wendy on BLS. I'm sorry to say that you've survived infidelity. Um, I have always felt as though infidelity was a deal breaker. Can you please describe how you survived the ordeal? How can you trust again? By the way, does Dave's wife listen to the show? How can he be so bold? No, Dave's wife is buried in the cut. She does not listen to the show. And uh, me and how I survived it. I lay it all out in my book, my New York Times bestseller, Wendy's Got the Heat. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because when, mm -hmm. when I was telling you guys in the book, that was heart-wrenching telling. I mean, for me to tell it to you now, I'm going to tell it to you all cavalier and silly like, you know, well, you know, you just pick yourself up and you just move on. Well, you know, you, you know what I mean? When I'm telling you in the book, I'm telling you, like, literally, during that meeting, I, you know, was with the tears and the, you know, the whole dramatic, as a matter of fact, the whole damn book. I'm with the tears, the box of tissues. You know, every every meeting was just like therapy. Me talking to the writer, Karen Hunter. That's my writing partner. But um, so if you would like to find out how I survived it, I, I lay it out. As a matter of fact, we both lay it out. Um, he talks about it also in my book. Wendy's Got the Heat. Came out last fall and it debuted on the New York Times bestsellers list and stayed there for a few weeks. And I, I appreciate you guys um purchasing that book i know a lot of a lot of moms received my book for mother's day and i know because i got like the emails and faxes and stuff and i i so appreciate that and then all of a sudden i get a phone call from the my book label and they tell me at christmas time there was another surge in sales and i just thank you <laughs> you know wow definitely oh, wow. classic well, wendy the wendy williams experience book will be out um Actually, they can put it out tomorrow because I'm ready. I mean, I was so prepared in doing it. This is the cover. This is the this is the um cover. So, wow, that's classic, it. Wendy. It really is, and I, you know what? BLS. I remember that. Some of these clips that we're playing tonight. By the way, thank you again for joining us. And I know we're getting me and Scal are re reuniting, so we're getting like off track and just reminisce. We, are, Jonesy. we do want you to watch the Wendy stuff tomorrow. And Lifetime. if you have any questions about 
the movie or the documentary tomorrow, put it all in the chat. Like, I don't know what you guys specifically want to know, but whatever you want to know or ask, put it in the chat. Um, I personally love the documentary more than the biopic. But okay, you do? I absolutely do because mm -hmm. it's just all Wendy. And she goes from crying to swinging her hair to, 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 to being strong to mm -hmm. standing on her square to falling out again. Like they played that clip over of her, like it was just, it gave me life. I love the documentary, which will come on afterwards tomorrow. And we'll mm -hmm. be back here again tomorrow at seven, by the way. The reason seven. why people know that we canceled our watch party is because after I did Salt and Pepper's watch party last week, I personally felt like, who the fuck want to be talking to you while I'm trying to watch that? Even right. if it's me talking. Right, 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 right. Even though it's me talking, I know you want to watch them. Do like, you know what I Josie, mean? Josie, like, be quiet. I'm trying to watch. And oh, right. I, I, I want to I wanna tune in to you and listen to you. But this Salt and Pepper is so right. interesting. Oh, my God. So, ah, exactly. So. Uh, and it was not uh, even though no, it wasn't even uh, a great movie. It was like not even a, that great. But Wendy's is great, and I don't want y'all to feel okay like I'm taking you away. So that's the reason why we changed the day and why we changed the time. Josie, and we're taking your question in the chat. Yes. Question number one: Salt and pepper on a scale of one to five. Five being the greatest, one being uh, never again. What do you think, one to five? <laughs> so my, their story is their story. Just because they didn't have dicks Jonesy, in the mouth. Jonesy, one to five. Know. Jonesy, one to five. No. I'm <laughs> I'd give it a four. I'd give it a four. And really? only because, yeah, you know why? Because some of the casting was a little off. But I, their story is their story. I like that they didn't drag Tretch for the gods because they could have okay. dragged him for filth and they did not. Yo, you got Jonesy, I have his book for that. I tell you no lie, when I was watching it with um, my sister and her husband and like my cousin and everything, we we're, we're having like a, a little get together watching a movie. When they did the impersonation of the Salt and Pepper on stage, which was Salt's daughter and Pepper's daughter, Egypt, we were looking and we we're like, yo, that looked just like, you know, Salt and Pepper. And then they were like, you know, the uh, impersonations were played by Salt's daughter and Pepper's daughter, Egypt. We were like, oh my God, like, Wait a minute, bitch, you telling me something I didn't even know. Wait, that was Egypt and Salt's daughter? That was Egypt and Salt's daughter when they go to the club and the guy's like, no, Salt and Pepper, they're already on stage and everything oh like that. Oh my God, I didn't even pay attention yeah, to that. Very, All right. Yeah, we're looking at it and we're like, I was like, yo, that looks just like Pepper. And then like okay. at the end, okay. and then when they did the sit down with Lonnie Love from The Real, yes. and they were talking about the movie, they were like, yeah, you know, Peppa was like, that was my daughter, Egypt. And I forget Salt's daughter's name. And Salt was like, yeah, our daughters played us as the impersonators. Everybody in the room in our house was like, oh, told you, like, oh, like that, yep. Wow. Her name's Didn't Corinne. Her, her name's that. Corinne. Salt's daughter's name is Corinne. Thank you, Kim. And I happen to love that name too. But I love that the kids, you know what? Yeah. I, I, I gave it a four. I gave it a four because it's their story is their story. Skell, you didn't know I was the original Peppa. You didn't know that. Jonesy, red light, green light, yellow One, light. One, two, three. <laughs> you her, were her the original. Herbie talked about it in Vibe Magazine. I was the original Peppa. But I went to college. My mother wasn't having all that salt, pepper, oregano, Italian seasoning. <laughs> she was wait. Not you were the original Peppa, and do you ever remember Wendy telling us that she was the original Spinderella? No, but bring it full circle, cause yeah, <laughs> yep. You Wendy, keep my show on track. Go ahead and tell yeah, me. Yeah, Jonesy, like. Wendy. Uh, you know, when I was her intern, her producer, Hot 97, everything like that, she'd be like, uh, if she play a Salt and Pepper song, she'd be like, yeah, you, you know, Wendy, like Hot 97, you know, I was originally the Spinderella before the first Spinderella. Oh my God, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, look at that. Look That's at God. Look at that God. I knew from Wendy. Yep. 
I kept my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I kept my notes. For right those of you just joining us, Skell has he ripped up his notes. At, ripped I don't them up. Throw them in the air. Ripped them up. Do we have any more questions? Stop ripping shit up. Any questions? We do. Big shout yeah. out to A dot. Yeah, we do. So, Jones, you keep referring, you referred to Wendy, um, like the Statue of Liberty falling out. So it's a question from Jay Smith. Uh, let's see here. Oh, actually, that, that day right there, that was like, I, I didn't know what that, she, I was like, bitch, what you see? Let me run. Go ahead. Actually, it's not from Jay. It's from Tanya Brown. Tanya Brown wanted to know, do you think that karma bit her that day? She looked like she saw the devil. Denisha, you are doing a great job. Let's just give it up for her real quick, keeping the brand, keeping up the brand. And Denisha, you're cut. doing great. Oh, look. Um, <laughs> and action, go. She, I think it was. Everybody, can you guys please like not make me feel alone on an island right now and share your comments in the chat? What did y'all think when y'all saw that whole? Because I don't watch it. But I got texts and I went back and watched that bitch. So what did y'all think? Because it did look like she saw something. And and um, I don't know. I don't know. But I know that if you are dealing with somebody that has half of all your money is a part of your life, a part of your personal life, a part of your professional life, and you have to be around them and you know because Wendy knew he's been cheating. He had been cheating since the beginning of their inception. And from what I understand, she had been drinking heavily, heavily drinking, drinking. I have a friend who lived in the, uh, the neighborhood. Please don't get mad at me, friend, because I know you're listening and I'm not going to say your name. But Wendy had gone into the liquor store one night and bought out all of my friend's favorite wine. She bought like all 12 bottles. <laughs> Like I Pinot said, Grigio, Pinot I Grigio? It, I think it was a, what was it? I forget. It was a Bogle. It's a white wine oh, Bogle, okay. a Bogle white wine. Okay. Um, <laughs> she bought it out. So I can only imagine the type of hell you have to be in to be drinking 10 or 12 bottles of Bogle. Because at that point, I need more than, <laughs> no look, I need more than that. But, you know. Okay, Jonesy, maybe it was... She, like you said, allegedly maybe drank too much, right? Then the next day is Halloween. She's celebrating Halloween. Yay, I'm going to be Statue of Liberty. And, and, then, and then she puts on a Statue of Liberty. Now in the studio, it's lights, it's camera, it's action. She you want to hang with the overheat shit? Yeah, maybe she had a hangover. The, the uh, all I know is that bitch uh, Statue of Liberty That's was it was hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Statue of Liberty fell in the water like that. Right. Like, <laughs> right. 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 She, all 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 I know is that bitch hit the deck. And that uh, Kevin ran downstairs and scooped her up in his arms. And she said at that point, she felt like maybe there would be a second chance for their relationship. Because remember, she knew he had been cheating all along. This nigga had a separate apartment. Can I talk to people right now? Can I talk to you guys that are here right now for the Miss Jones conversations with Skell? Go ahead. If you're married- all, all of this is going to be on the Wendy Williams movie, right? But, and the documentary yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, but they don't have the twist. Like I'm about to give them the twist. Okay, is twist it, it up, okay? twist it up. For your husband or your wife to have a separate apartment for the homies to chill once you're married, I'm just going to sit and wait and sit and wait for your comments in the chat. That's all. Um, Kim says, absolutely not. Bitch, you right with me. You are my friend. Rashawn said, hell no. Sharon says, hell no. What's the purpose of getting married and taking myself off the market if you still got the homies crib? You feel me? Katrina said, oh, Katrina, I can't say that one. Katrina, Katrina said, is that Katrina in the net? Katrina said, F no. Yeah, yeah. I'm just letting the, I'm letting the people speak. Ken, Ken Smith said, ah, uh, no. Like, ah, uh, no. 
Monique said, ain't no damn way. Ain't no way. Ain't, ain't no, no way. way. <laughs> ain't no way. No because way. in my opinion, and of course. I love we, Aretha Franklin. Ain't we're no all way. learning. This, shut up, Scout. Listen, we're all growing and we're all learning. But listen, there's no way <laughs> that you allow your person, man or woman, to have a set. You're setting yourself up for the fuck fest. You know what it is. It ain't just his boys that's getting it. And so I believe that Wendy knew all along that he was cheating, but because she was in front of this audience every day and he was well aware, she thought that he would respect their brand enough to never actually be true to that Sharina game. And he's corny because you let go of Wendy for this basic, mm -mm. nope, nope, nope. No, ain't no way. But no I'll, way. I'll take your comments. I'll take your comments. And there might be someone that feels differently. But again, you have to look and own your part in the shit. Jonesy, I think on Monday morning, which is February 1st, when you do your Miss Jones reunion show on YouTube with Michael Sean and um, DJ Envy, Envy, oh, I think people that, are going to be like, yo, Jonesy, I saw you or I listened to you on Friday night. Then, you know, we watched the movie on Saturday, um, Saturday night. And since this is your premiere of the Miss Jones reunion show on YouTube on Monday morning, which starts Black History Month, I think they're going to call you or somehow get in contact with you to be like, yo, let's talk about Wendy because I heard you say yada, yada, yada. Bye, this, this, bye. That. So da, 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 da. That's right. And I want to talk about, I don't like to, now that I have kids, Kids are off limits. Wait, before I had kids, I didn't give a fuck really. <laughs> uh, I really didn't know what all the big fuss was yeah, about. Call 97. <laughs> but now that I have kids, yeah. But so, but so, I feel a way. I feel a way about a bitch knowing that, that the dude she fucking with is with another bitch and not just a regular bitch, but like a prominent bitch. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, but, but, Okay, I don't know. I f tell me how I feel, chat. People in the chat, Kiss FM, take a drink. Tell me how I feel. Because I have mixed I, emotions. You can't I take that on the baby. Mm -hmm. And kids are I, off limits on my show. But 10 years at least. And I heard, you want to know what I heard, y'all? I heard that every time VLS had a trip, Sharina was on those trips. And she was at one hotel and Wendy was at another. This nigga was slinging cock left to right from this side of the resort to the other. Child cheese. Mm hmm. Kiss FM. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, wow. They didn't have sex for a year when she was trying to have kids and kept losing babies. Okay. Then guess what? He had the right to be honest and say, I can't take it anymore. It's not that I don't love you, but it's some shit within me. You know, it always works when you put it on yourself and leave. You don't get to stay and cheat on me and then blame me not being able to carry your babies for it later. That's what you don't get to do. Make a decision. Yes, it'll break my heart if you leave me, but I respect you better if you do that and be honest than fuck me over 10 years later at the height of my career. And then, and then, and then he tried to, do you know what this nigga tried to do to her? He tried to make her look like she was the out of control junkie at the end and put her in that fucking sober house so that he could buy time. He was trying to spin the narrative. You'll see it in the movies tomorrow. He tried to spin the narrative so he gets to walk away like, I did the best I could for her, but she just got out of control. No, bitch, you was there from the first. You knew what she was. You was down with it. You might not have been partaking in it, but you were well aware. You were trying to, he tried to finish her off. He tried to, can somebody please talk to me in the spirit of niggas or bitches trying to finish you off and paint you out to be crazy to all your friends and their friends in a relationship? Has nobody been there? That's why I love the fact that she had this movie and I hear this movie's been in the works for a while, but she redid it to fit this mm. narrative and tell mm. the real truth and finish his motherfucking ass off. Because when you watch it tomorrow, you'll see she got the last laugh, child. And I keep playing with my wig like a Shanti on Versus. Huh? Mm, 
the Wendy movie. Wow, that I'm gonna be right there. Whoa. Hey, Josie. Uh, speaking of verses, right? Somebody just texted me and said something about Waco. I'll get to the okay. I'm even though I don't my, watch. My it. bad. My bad. No, no, no. It's okay. all good. You didn't know. Um, about mm -hmm. Charlemagne mm -hmm. introducing him to Sharina. So mm -hmm. here's what I'm gonna say on that. Y'all know Envy's on my morning show on Monday. And y'all know he's currently doing morning shows with with um Charlemagne. And Angela Yee, the Breakfast Club, right? I'm not, but more more so Charlemagne. Y'all not gonna get me in them shitty ass weeds, so that when I get up there to do my interview promoting my show, that nigga be like, "Why you threw me under the bus?" Yeah, I introduced them, but I ain't tell them the fucker. So, yes, in the movie mm. they discuss the fact that Charlemagne introduced went introduced Kev to Sharina because I think mm -hmm. they were both from South Carolina. Wow, what a uh, couple of South Carolina to like West Orange or Morristown or no, not Morristown, wherever they were. But anyway, yes, but I don't think he told Kev or anybody could tell Kev to or to not fuck her. You understand? So don't mm. blame Charlemagne. A man is going to do what a man's going to do. And you let him have his whole apartment while he's married to you. As you were, Scal, what was your question? There's a question. No. For, there's a question for Scal. What's up, Danisha? Oh, don't. No, I'm the producer. They oh, okay. Sorry, producer. Get to the question. <laughs> they want to know if Scal introduced him to chicks too. Did I introduce Kevin to chicks? Yeah. No. <laughs> Scal is so serious with it. Like, no. I was doing my own thing in the clubs. What? <laughs> Ain't no half stepping. Mm -mm. I was running with Isaac Hayes, player, player for real. I was real. with Isaac Hayes and I you was on video music box. Yep. I was on High 97. I was just a wild, wild boy in the 90s, 97, 98, 99 on High Kevin 97. Did, Kevin didn't need no help anyway. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Producer, who asked that? that so we can shout him out? Sorry. Is All right. Anyone, no, I, I never introduced Kev to anybody. Is anyone in the chat like either confirming or denying the fact that when you allow your person to have uh, a, and you stay for 10 years, that's kind of like saying it's okay. She always said to me, I can excuse infidelity depending on the circumstances, but a baby is no go. She always said that. So I wasn't surprised that Wendy in the movie and in real life shutting his ass down. What I didn't like is the fact that she didn't prenup up. Bitch, you had way more money than me, and even I prenupped up. And thank God for that. Whew. Okay. Whew. Wow. Kiss FM. Uh, we'll be C. Back. Craig, C. Craig said uh, Kevin tried to paint Charlemagne as a bottom. So we're going to keep moving on from there. Um, somebody else oh said. Somebody, Kim, Kim King said. I heard that uh, Kevin owned a, oh, an entire house. Um, somebody yes, else, Hunty, Jay, yes. Jay Smith said, we all know he broke it, that he broke her arm. She says, uh, she says herself in the movie that she fell and broke her arm. Now, so here's my, y'all want to hear my story of what probably happened? She fell and broke her arm when she was a Statue of Liberty? No, no, oh. during a fight. Do you ever, have oh. you ever been in an altercation and you guys are tussling, maybe going back and forth or you're like, you're not backing down, but you forget that there's a table right behind you and you're like doing the most. And then you actually fall and your full weight falls because you forgot that table's right there and you wind up breaking your arm. So technically he broke the arm or wait, non-technically, he broke the arm, but technically she broke the arm and he didn't. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? What does it say? Incompatible software detected. Lord Jesus, listen, this is just something just popped up on my son's computer. If you lose me and I can't get back to you, I did the best I could. I'm sorry. I'm trying. Jonesy, J. Smith says that I can see that and uh, like, we know what you mean. Right, right, Jay Smith. Thank you. Jay Smith. Yeah, That's I just like saw that. That's like an accidental, like, I shouldn't be fighting with you. You shouldn't be fighting with me. No way. 
but I forgot the cat was there and I trip over the cat. So I can say that I broke my arm. You guys know what it is. So Jones, I swear I'm not anonymous, but anonymous is busy in this chat. So uh, anonymous wants to know, what are your thoughts on Wendy trying to act like she was plotting to leave Kevin for 13 years? Was she really? How are you plotting as plotful as she is? Cause she tells in the movie how she hired a private detective and she knew. Jonesy, you can't tell the movie though, right? Or All right, psych. All right, red light. Psych. <laughs> Why is it? Oh, Sharon, Sharon, said, Sharon said that was in the trailer. My bad. Okay, good. So green light. As plotful, <laughs> as plotting, and scheming and brilliant as Wendy is, she had an escape plan with the first husband, remember? So why did your second husband take 13 years? I think when we, as women, sometimes when we have children with a man, that changes the level of shit-tation that we'll take. And we always want to have that picture-perfect image for the sake of our kids, of our kids having family and not going to school and getting clowned. You know what I mean? So I just feel that might be part of the reason why she gave him chance after chance and 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 just hung in there. Listen, she said herself in the movie, when she fainted on stage, he ran downstairs from his office, scooped her up in his arms. And she said, at that point, I thought that we could reconcile. I said, he really does love me. She said, he sat down and talked to me and said, get back out there. Never let him see you sweat. Now, personally, me, I said, that's him putting her back on the track. But she looked at it as him believing in her and him being her biggest fan and her biggest supporter. And she got back out there and said the whole spiel about, oh, I overheated, whatever. I said, the real love would have taken her to the clinic or the doctor or whatever and not made her go back that day. That's just me. Don't listen to me because I make horrible choices when it comes to men and relationships. Disclaimer, just saying. So Joan, you, have, a, you, have, you have another clip. Do you want to get jump into this clip? Let's jump into the clip. Let's and do I'm it. Not about, but let's jump into it. What else is good? You know, and I sent you a fax yesterday uh, regarding Usher and Chili, but you never got a chance to yes, get what, to Yes, what did you it. say? What did you say? I heard that the real reason that they broke up is because there's some chick, there's some chick claim, claiming she's three and a half months pregnant from Usher. Okay, we've already said that. I thought you were bringing something new to the table. No, I didn't. This is the first time I'm hearing it. Wow. 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 Yeah. Locked up, girl. Oh. Not in that sense. Not in that sense. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> Everybody's busy. They got a life. Yeah, uh, that's already out there. Oh, I didn't hear this. Yeah, well, you know, there's more to the story, but, you know, there's so much catching up. You you know, miss a day, miss a lot. I know, I know, that's sad. Right. Also, I'm an independent contractor for Fantasia Home Parties. Anytime you want a party done, you let me know. Okay. My major in is uh, lingerie, lotions, and all types of adult exotic toys. Let me know. Yeah. Okay, thank you for calling. All right, I'll take care. I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but I don't have those kind of parties. Um, you know what? I didn't even have those kind of parties as a single woman. I don't know why I just didn't. Um, I guess your information along the art, though. <laughs> Seems like the type that would have those parties. Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is in the other room. He gave me the thumbs up. Uh, shout out to uh, Alicia, who's listening in Hempstead, who says, Johanna would make a perfect mature woman beauty product spokesperson like L'Oreal Wrinkle Cream. She comes across as flawless, flawless in photos, but she looks about 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So perhaps had she done some parties. <laughs> no, you can't say that because a man going to be a man, whether you hanging from a chandelier like Beyonce and Jay-Z allegedly cheating on her, you could be the most beautiful, the most talented, the richest the most church praying a man or a woman. People are who they are, right? Let the church say amen. Right, people are who they are. But I want to say, perhaps had you done a little lingerie, you know, perhaps maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Tanya Brown said facts, amen. 
She'll see you on church on Sunday. (laughs) I'll be the one (laughs) with the sunglasses on in the front pew. Yeah, I don't know. I it's I don't know. This is all hindsight. That's why I'm so glad I found it. Let me show you this binder. Let me show okay. you the bindage. Jonesy, and these windy clips are like, uh, oh my God. Let me tell you they something. sound They sound a lot like the bonus hour from BLS and everything Look at from this Wendy Williams binder. experience. Look, Look at that got, binder. I've got, oh wait, it's upside down. Everything about the fallout. Look, I've got tapes upon tapes, CDs for days. So I'd like to offer that we just meet up here every Friday night at seven. And I just have like clips from, <laughs> from these CDs. Yeah, Jonesy, like, that's Let's just do this. Cause right? she didn't do her TV show like she did radio. Let's just, in honor of Wendy, giving her her roses while she's here. Let's just meet up every Friday night and play back the tapes tapes look at this look look just and tapes. after her movie comes on lifetime people are gonna be just talking about that for look, like somebody gonna want to purchase these tapes and i'm here for it lifetime i'm here for it. bravo and do you know where to find me holla oh my god i just missed the name but yes i do remember when uh jonesy this is what wendy would do when she got back to uh bls uh 107.5 when she did the wendy williams experience she would actually have actual listeners like karen from uptown and joanne from brooklyn and all these people come up to the radio station oh but it's covid so we can do it on a zoom like andy does on bravo right Oh, wait. Who no, does- like we can have their pictures up. Like we can have their pictures up. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, but I was explaining to you and, and everyone on Facebook and YouTube and everything that back when Wendy was doing the Wendy uh, Williams experience on BLS, she would invite the listeners to the station and they would actually sit there in the next studio, how BLS was uh, situated. Yeah, and they'd be able to watch her do her show live watch her do show show live and she would she would call it like the lipo lunch and she would um have uh discussions about liposuction and like women would be there and i just wanted to say that because um i forgot the name that i just saw just flashed on the bottom they of make the a screen suggestion that we do something like that no they didn't make a suggestion they just said uh remember when wendy was at okay. bls da, 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 da. so i just wanted yeah. to shout shout no, out that's, to that's the person wonderful. but i didn't I see think the person's my idea name has legs and it's brilliant and i think that <laughs> we should just like meet here every friday night and like every friday you guys okay. are doing every friday I'm what time jolie like seven i don't know now would that interfere with your miss jones reunion show that comes on facebook on uh february 1st Thank you for that plug. Absolutely. <laughs> actually enhance it. And Michael Sean could come on too, right? Yes. And we'll I haven't have seen Michael Sean since Philly. Apple. We'll have two bites at the apple because my show comes on Monday and a whole uh-huh. lot of stuff happens during the week that mother needs to assess. Okay. And I will definitely be, oh, are you inviting me? <laughs> I'm just inviting myself. So, <laughs> I'm just in- listen, after the New York reunion with Envy and Michael Sean, I'm doing Philly reunion and then oh. I'm doing the other Philly reunion because I was there like oh. three or four times. So I'm doing those. That's oh. my plan. Let's see oh. if Kobe, let's see if Kobe Cole will have me in Philly. Maybe you guys need to reach out to him. What's up, Kobe Cole? If you'll oh. have me in Philly. Monique, Monique says, can't wait for the reunion. Nicole says, Jonesy, what did you think of the actress who played Wendy? That's I from thought Nicole. her teeth were extra big, distractingly big. But once I was able to get past the size of her teeth, she wasn't that bad. And she didn't have a lot of contact with Wendy. She only had, I think, two meetings with Wendy. So for her to only have interacted twice and not have gotten a lot of feedback from Wendy, I think Mm -hmm. she did a great job. Okay, uh, Jonesy, what time is your show on Monday morning? So because it's a YouTube show, we're (laughs) actually taping it on Sunday. Okay. I'm just giving myself time to edit and you know I okay. need my naps. Mm-hmm. So it could very well be uploaded Sunday night. 
but you're okay. not gonna get me to say that on tape, but it could very well be oh, Sunday night. I, okay, no, I, I thought it was gonna be like a specific time or if it was gonna be live because- no, it'll be up like, there on YouTube. They can listen to it whenever, every week, Monday, except, wait, I don't know if Envy's gonna be around for Super Bowl Sunday the next week. We'll mm -hmm. have to play that by ear. But even if he's not, the show goes on. Josie, are you gonna have a Super Bowl party? That's a good idea. Hmm. And I understand that you don't watch verses or are into it though. But my question about the verses, right? I was listening. I don't know who I heard, but they were like, maybe Escape is going to be against SWV. What kind of matchup is that? Oh, okay. I was just going to say, yeah, your opinion. If there was a versus with Escape and SWV, is that a matchup or is that like? That's so not a matchup. You need a group like in Vogue, maybe, to go up against SWV, where you have a Vogue strong lead SWV. singer. Okay. Maybe, but I don't even know. Yeah, in Vogue didn't have as many hits, but no, no. Escape oh, to wait. Oh, I missed the name. It said Kelly Price versus Faith Evans. No, Faith needs to go against Mary, just because okay. they both had Diddy in the thing. Okay. Kelly okay, Price okay. can go against maybe, maybe Little Mo, maybe? No. Kelly Price in versus Little Mo? Who else are we going to give her? Like, Kelly Price, like a singer. Because um, she started with hooks. Okay, and wait. Little Mo started Jay, with hooks. Jay Smith said Fantasia. Now, Jay Smith, <gasps> is yes! it Fantasia yes, versus Smith. Kelly Price? Yes, Jay, Jay Smith. Smith. Yes. Jay Smith. Jay Smith. Jay Smith. I want to have Price Fantasia. Oh, yep, Fantasia and Kelly Price. That's it. And, and I they play just it. they just said Little Mo versus K Michelle. No. No. K Michelle has too too much. No. No. No, Faith and Mary, because Faith was on a lot of uh, background vocals of Mary. That's what it just said. It said, uh oh, are you ready for this? What? Little Mo versus Miss Jones. Damn right. That was me in the chat. Knock him <laughs> out the box. <laughs> we are the queen of hooks. Yellow Knock him out the box. Yellow light. We're going yeah. back to Wendy. Yellow light. Okay. Back to oh. Wendy. Her listen, show. Listen, listen, people. Her understand. Movie, understand. Lifetime. Yes, tomorrow. Yes, to promote Wendy, but y'all already know what it is. You know what it was when you registered. What do you want to know about the Wendy movie? I'm telling you a lot. I don't want to give everything away, but put it in the chat, your questions, and we'll respond accordingly. I can't just make it Jonesy, fodder. so are you saying it's you all about you right now? No. And, Wait, oh, okay. what did you say, DB? They want to know, what do you think of the guy that played Kevin? He was good. Don't what, you? Does he look like him? Was his he mannerisms does. like him? He looked like him. His mannerisms were like him. He, he he talked like him, he walked like him. Very good, I love that casting. It's just that in the biopic, the girl that played Wendy, it was Sarah. the team. It was very, very, very rabbit, very Roger Rabbit for me. She's uh, Ciara from Tyler Perry's The Oval. Yes. Okay, then it was, I <laughs> Jonesy, just- take the high road. No, there's no high or oh, low. Okay. Okay, because it looked like if I'm more looking than at you and it looked like can you. Relate, it's not hate. That's my new thing. If more than one person can relate, it's not hate. Jonesy, if you had a movie, who would play you? Would you play yourself or would someone else play you? I don't know. I'm not even there yet. I'm still trying to figure out my life, but I'm okay. not saying anything bad against the girl that played Wendy. I just right. said it was just, you guys will see. You'll see tomorrow. As soon as that, excuse me, as soon as she comes on, y'all gonna be like, those teeth. And they were bright white, which is a good thing, but I just, it was too much, but. Red light, why were you about to call her the B word? Cause I just be saying bitch, 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 bitch. Not bitch, the bitch, 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 bitch. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, it has totally nothing to do with her. It's just me. All right, bitch. Exactly. All right. All right. <laughs> Whatever, I don't care. Like it's just it, like child, bit, man, you know. All right, so Joey, yes, you when he first oh my in, God. Kiss FM, but she doesn't mention him in the movie, so I won't mention him here. She didn't mention him in the movie, so I won't mention him here. Okay, got Talk it. About total, I don't know about Total Scale. Were you there when Total showed up to Hot 97 to fight Wendy? 
I don't know about that. Uh, that was high 97. Uh, yeah, I was there. I was there. Now, Ciara said, the, the actor said Wendy would call her nightly, but then she also did an interview with Ebro and them saying that she only got to talk to her twice. So I don't know what the real story is. I was going on what Ciara, this is the actress in the biopic. I was okay. going on what I heard Ebro and them say, that she only got to speak to Wendy twice and that the actor that played Kevin didn't get to speak to Kevin at all. Okay, Jonesy, I have some um, information about that because I was watching Wendy's show. Um... And Wendy dated a lot of rappers. All I know, oh. all I know was Method and I think Biggie, that she used to smoke weed with a lot of them. Now dating, that's different than sexing. And I'm referring to sexing. Oh. So let me say allegedly, but allegedly. I know what I know and I know what she told me. Method. What she tell you? Method. Okay. Biggie. Biggie. And um, and I didn't know about Eric B. Did y'all know? Did y'all know that Wendy like had a real relationship with Eric B? Yes, Eric B. Make a clap to this. Exactly. Right. Rochelle. Rochelle said heck no. Rochelle. Rochelle said heck no. Uh, Kim says yes. She says it all the time. I did well. I don't watch the show, but it's in the movie, okay. so good. Yeah. So, like I was saying, I watched the show, and she said that she would talk to the actress Sierra from time to time because they would talk, and Sierra would be like, "Wendy, I'm doing this for the movie, and how did you act, or like, how did you do this? How would you do that?" So they had a constant communication during the filming of the movie. I don't that's, doubt that's that. She, I just, yeah. but from what I heard from Ebro and them, that she said she only spoke to her twice. It really doesn't oh, okay. matter. And to okay. me, like, that's but, like, yeah, no, I appreciate it. But that, you know, whatever. Yeah, you, Good. The movie Tomorrow, Lifetime. Both the movies, the biopic. Oh, and the, and the documentary, uh, biopic. The, the doc was my favorite. Right. Any other, was Eric B the love of her life? I don't know. Cause I learned about Eric B. She never talked to me about Eric B. Did she, Skell? Did she talk to you about Eric B.? Jonesy, I don't know if she talked to you about um, Eric B. But she talked to you. Oh my God, am I getting old? Uh, I knew. I knew <gasps> that she dated Eric. You did? Bitch, you held out on me because you ain't never tell me. Jonesy, what am I supposed to come up to you at Hot 97 and be like, Jonesy, guess what? I'm sorry I'm late to so wait. run your board. Was it but... a secret? Was it a secret? <laughs> and and um, was he the love it's of her her... life? That's what someone's asking. Um, Red light. Um, red light <laughs> means like red light. Um, okay, All that right. was, I think that was just her personal, like, yo, she's like her and Eric B are, are, are getting it on, but and in the she movie, probably, but she probably wouldn't go on the radio and be like, yeah, I'm with Eric B or something like that. Because you know that what? Was her, I bet it was personal, one of those relationships where he told her it was her personal, probably don't put our business in the streets. You know how, as uh, we okay. Her, Thank you, Kim King says they just hooked up a couple of times. Yeah, but in the movie, she gave him her car and he didn't. Nosy, red light. <sighs> you... All right. This is why I wind up going back to You were to just me. playing, right? Right. You were just playing when you said in the movie, right? I, 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 <laughs> laugh. Please laugh. Laugh. Please laugh. Please kiss laugh. Um, the kiss means we care. I'm going to play <laughs> the Homer Simpson drop from Hot 97. What, DB? You wanted to say a, something? We have another I produce question it. from Anonymous. That's not me. Do you believe you, Jones, and Oskel, and Wendy could possibly work together in the future? Yes, I would love to. The message. Hi, Wendy. The message. Hi, Jonesy. The lawsuit. The question is, what company would be willing to get an insurance policy <laughs> against the three of us? <laughs> Cause I'm saying everything, nah. I'm and, I, and I'm staying totally in my lane and letting Wendy lead. Yeah, I, I play my part. Uh, actually, Jones, that's what happened when you used to come into the studio and right. we were all be in there. We just be like, we play our position. It, like, let her attack yeah. you. She uh, she start from attacking you. What are you wearing today? People with foreheads like yours don't need to wear bangs. I'm just saying. I would play left field, center field, and right field. <laughs> and sometimes um, third base. I'm all totally at, all type at one A time. personality, but when there's someone that's type A plus, 
I can fall in line. And she was so intriguing and interesting. You just wanted to shut up and gaze. And just look at her talk, right? Like, Wendy, you are bringing the heat. She's like a phenomenon. Station. She's like a phenomenon. So I'm really, in closing, because I don't know if we wrapping up and going to the after Jonesy, all we would do is really is just laugh at her shenanigans. Well, we all laughed together. We didn't laugh at her. We laughed with oh, her. All right. Yep. My bad. My fault. She, did, she knew she was giving us, she knew she was giving us too much. Um, are there any more questions in the chat? Yeah, I'm all over the place, Jones. We can go to the trailer and then get people's opinion. Okay. Jonesy, I miss you and I can't wait for the reunion show. Thank you, Scal. You Tell know. Michael Sean and DJ Envy, I said, what's up, for real? I will. They're probably on here listening. Okay. Yeah, what up, Michael not- Sean? What up, Envy? Jonesy, you look so pretty. I have a career for over three decades talking about people, and now I'm being talked about. Get the f*** out of here. A Lifetime original documentary. You lean in when you're watching her. What happened? Tell me. I do hot topics. I don't live hot topics. She can forgive an affair, but an affair with a baby, that's it. This is the culmination of everything. 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 A Lifetime original documentary. Wendy Williams, What a Mess. Premieres Saturday, January 30th at 10. Only on Lifetime. Oh my God. See, I might have to come back after that shit. We might have to reconvene after. <laughs> All right, so the party at seven o'clock tomorrow is canceled. We'll meet you back here at midnight. I don't know. <laughs> We stayed up all night long talking about this it's all girl, night Wendy Williams long. The mic. I am here to stay. Wendy Williams is not going anywhere. I'm going to come in like a hurricane. So, Whitney, are you still using drugs? Who wants to give you a talk? Millions of people turn on the radio to listen to me. You're the star. I am going to tell it like it is. I'm becoming a real business. And I've been trusting you to take care of all of that. Whoa. You're self-indulgent. You're narcissistic. You got a coke habit. He's having a baby with her. Before I had you, I had me. And not you nor anyone else have the power to take away my gifts. I'm going to bring the heat. Let it go up in flames. will turn this city out. A Lifetime original movie, Wendy Williams, premieres Saturday, January 30th at 8, only on Lifetime. And I can't wait. And yes, she did wear a crown. She, a crown. Yeah, she, she did. did. She, she did. did. She did. She did. <laughs> she did always wear a crown. <laughs> I can't wait. And I love- oh, I can't that. wait to watch this. I, I want to look again, right? <laughs> Jonesy, red light. <laughs> Listen, it's too late now. The lifetime right, it offices, is. Yeah. Look, the lifetime offices are closed. <laughs> they can't shut us down. Um, what did you learn from her? What did I learn from Wendy? I learned to be yourself, right? She told oh. me. Yeah. She told me, always tell on yourself. Yeah. So that nobody has power over you. Right. Right. Which is so ironic because. She didn't tell on herself. And then it wound up eating at her and almost destroying her. She told me, Skell, just let him talk. I'm like, really? Yeah, I don't believe that, though, because people say sticks and stones. No, bitch, words do hurt. You see this scar right here? Here we go. The the scar. (laughs) Listen. (laughs) The sticks and stone. She's very wise. And um, to any person that has ever felt like they were down and out and there was no coming back and there was no, that you were just all done, I think that her movie will change that in your mind. And you'll know that you're only done when you stop trying. No, Jonesy, um, seriously, on a serious note, I know like I've been kind of acting a fool with you all night long, but that's what we do, act up and make noise. But I don't think I would be sitting here talking about Wendy's movie or your YouTube show, Miss Jones Reunion, if it wasn't for 
of course, Wendy. Like, she took me under her wing from Kiss FM to Hot 97. Back to BLS. Back to BLS. And I just feel like we were young. You, You know, you came in the mix when you came to Kiss FM for your interview when you had your first singles and stuff like that. And we were all so young and now we're And what did I bring? Older. Y'all reminded I'll, me. Yeah. This, was a, big, this when, was a big deal. This turned the yeah. corner. This, this, yeah. I was very scared to go up to, on Wendy's when, show. When, when Wendy did the top eight at eight on Kiss FM and Jonesy, you were a guest with your single. You came in and we were like looking through the monitor. Oh, there, here comes Miss Jones and you had a pizza pie. You had uh, what was on that pizza head. pie? It was Wendy's favorite that no one knew. Anchovies. And she said, how did you know? How did you know, right? But life happens. And now we're sitting here on the Zoom on a Friday night during COVID talking about this. And um, it's, it's just like amazing that life happens and life shows up and now we're older, wiser, maturer and everything like that, even though we're still with the shenanigans and everything like that. But, but guess what? The people that listen that are here tonight and even the ones that aren't here tonight, we all grew up together. Like y'all do realize yeah. that even though yeah. y'all were listening and we were in the building, we all was listening. Like we were all fans. We was partying with them at the tunnel. We was partying with them at like, the cheetah. But we, but we were all, we're all fans. Like we're all fans. And it's like, we're waiting to see how this story ends. And I just happened to be able to, I just needed a check and it turned into something. Cause I said, if I'm going to do something, I have to do it. But I'm glad I got the chance to watch it up close. Jonesy, I know how I the story is going to end. I'm glad I, I was know alive how the story it. got in. Wendy, um, have a movie because <laughs> all that does is, <laughs> is create more opportunity for more black women's stories to be told. And then I'll say this, um, it's, it's also like, I think what makes Wendy so profound is that not only did we get to watch her grow up and go through her and life. And we grew up with her, right, right. But right, with her, right. but now we're like physically, like on radio, you can only listen but the TV right. show allowed us to actually watch and learn and not feel alone when we have trials. You know what I mean? Right, right. Not feel so isolated. So I'm here for it. Um, Scal, why were you in the, there's a question. Uh, why weren't you in the documentary? Uh, I chose not to be a part of the documentary because I was just kind of like, I haven't seen Wendy in like 10 years. <laughs> and you ain't know what the fuck she had up and I'm like. <laughs> And I'm like, wait a minute, are they gonna get me in this room and put a dark, uh, send me in a dark room like interrogation and be like, you know. <laughs> you didn't trust the process. <laughs> I just was like, I don't know, I'm gonna pass on this, but I know how the story's gonna end being me, Jonesy and Wendy. Do you, are do you be regret it? And do, again. You like, do you no, like that I, I never, played you? I never regret anything. And the guy, I got a kick out of it when I saw how I was portrayed from Kiss FM to Hot 97 sitting there with Red and Wendy, Red Alert and Wendy. So big it, shout out to Red Alert DJ. Yeah. DJ Red Alert. Yeah. So it, I just I like enjoyed it. I was like, wow. My name's Trevor. I'm Skeletor. Skel being portrayed. That's kind of like, wow. That's amazing. Like someone's portraying me. And you know what? I hope you, like my, all, I hope you got a check for it. Because if they didn't get authorization, no, I'm kidding. Call my publicist. No, call your lawyer. I oh, the lawyer? The lawyer you know, first and the publicist? You know I went to law school. I'm a lawyer now, right? Jonesy, stop playing. Are you serious? Let's, let's sue this bitch and take the whole empire down. <laughs> Uplifting. Ah, you just spent the last two hours uplifting and telling us how we should love her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you really? Someone says, "Do we despise each other?" Where do you get this despising in this whole? No, I'm just reading that. No, I love, I love Jonesy. I love Wendy. I love me. You know, I want to know. I'm trying to figure out the energy. Where in this whole? Thing that we're doing tonight, does the does the spirit of 
despise no. me. No, okay, no, my bad. It says Wendy and Josie, J. Smith. J. Smith, what does that mean? No, oh. Wendy and Josie. No. I don't no. Just... She still asked about me. She's, listen, we have a little secret squirrel thing going on. We, it was always Kevin. Kevin got between us. Kevin was the poison. Kevin thought that I wanted what Wendy always wanted. And I always knew Wendy wanted to be on TV because she used to share her pilots with me. She had a lot, a lot of failed pilots, which they talk about in the movie. I never wanted mm -hmm. TV. He thought I did because I guess I had the look and I had the- You, you just wanted radio and No, I didn't even want, just, no, I didn't no. want radio. I did never want You radio. didn't want radio? No, Steve Smith came to me and I told him, I don't have time to do radio. I'm going to be a big singing star. Eh, right. Look right. how that turned out. But right. all I wanted to do was make records. And then, but I'm not stupid. I'm a hustler like right. Wendy. If there's a coin to be made, a coin will be made. I always wanted radio. I did ever since I was younger. And meeting Wendy, just like my dream came true. I was on the radio. So and it was like- me? She made your was, dream come true. Yeah, it was. I was so much younger, but and and also I just was like, wow, like I I did it. I'm on Hot 97, and I'm from Patterson, New Jersey, and like the hood is listening to me, and everybody's yeah. like, and it was. And then I went to Philly, and then I worked with Isaac Hayes on Kiss. I was like, oh my god, my head fell off my shoulder. And let me it tell you something. It rolled down 42nd Street. It Listen, made a right. I'm I know. Out. That I, you're so stupid. I know that you working with Isaac Hayes meant more to your parents than it could ever mean to you. No, rest in peace to my grandpa, Pop. He was like, you know, Isaac Hayes. That's you Black Moses, nigga. You work, you, work, <laughs> you work with Frankie Crocker? I was like, no, I don't work with Frankie Crocker. But Hold on. No, Hold on. Isaac Hayes. Crocker, huh? He was <laughs> like, you, you, you see Frankie Crocker? I was like, no, I work with Isaac Hayes. Because, you know, older people back in the day, it was just like Frankie Crocker was. That's like, uh, that's like to us, um, that's like Frankie Crocker to us is like Wendy Williams or Red Alert or those DJs. Look what I have. Yeah, yeah. But I worked with every, I, Jonesy, I worked with you. I worked with Wendy. I worked with Flex, Ed Lover, Isaac Hayes, uh, Vaughn Harper. Uh, uh, Isaac Hayes at the Shaft premiere. Oh, Jonesy, wasn't he the best? He was. And we spent Thanksgivings together. And I bring my sister along. All right. I any more Isaac Wendy Hayes. questions, okay. guys? Come on. Wendy Wednesday, show. Like, you know tomorrow, me as well. We get sidetracked and start talking about ourselves, our favorite people. Us. So, okay. Jones, uh, this question is from Val Woods. Do you think Wendy has a drinking or drug problem? Don't we all? Come on, Val. Toast it up. The end. Okay. Uh, it's FM. Don't we all? I mean, one person's problem is another person's hobby, right? I don't know. But I know that I feel like Kevin is the root of her drinking. I feel like Kevin is the root of her drugging. That's what I believe. And even if it started before Kevin, it was kicked back in because of his shenanigans. Can somebody please start asking questions about the side bitch? Are we just gonna really like, oh, oh, oh. Kids are off limits, but side bitches ain't. Come on, I need this chat. It's all about Wendy. It's all about Jonesy, reunion show. Yeah, but no, we need to get in, no? get to okay. in on that Sharina bitch, because I'm not, mm -mm, you ain't getting a pass. So while they're thinking of for... those questions, Jones, we have from, Oh, wait. Monisha, Monisha Jeter. She said, why do you think Wendy's husband had it out for you? Do you think Wendy was behind it? No, I totally don't. I don't. I think that he saw his, he saw competition in the market and he short-sighted thought that I would win. And that wasn't my race. So I never was even competing. But the world always tried to pit me and Wendy against each other or put us on the same thing. Like they even still today call me a mini Wendy. And I take that as a badge of honor, but I'm just, I just happen to be like a lot of other opinionated women that have strong positions and very deep perspectives. 
I speak my mind, but because Wendy was the only one doing it, of course you come around and people think you're trying to be her. Kevin thought I was trying to be that and he was afraid. So he tried to break us up. He tried to have me offed and Kevin is the root of all evil. Sorry. So, um, wait, how do you say he's the root of all evil? Like this? That's not nice. Jones, uh, Denise Presley. Denise Presley. Denise, hey, boo, where's Missy? Hey, Philly in the building. She's asking, do you almost feel sorry for Wendy? Yeah. Do you think it's really sad how everything went down, especially with the other woman a few houses away? Yep, that dirty fucking skanky bitch. Because I don't care. I don't care. That what Kevin and Wendy, I don't care what that's their shit, but bitch, you knew better. Cause you a window shopper. You was a fan. Ain't no way in telling me you wasn't. And you knew when you were going on those BLS trips to Jamaica and wherever the fuck else y'all was going, you knew that Wendy would be there, but you didn't care. You didn't care. Cause your little Bama, South Carolina ass just was looking for a come up. And in about two years, you'll be leaving Kevin. Mark my word, write it down now, save the date. Jonesy said it. Sharina is not in the long haul with Kevin. Next. Anonymous is here. That hey, boo. Kevin wanted to ride Wendy's coattails. Do you think Kevin wanted to ride Wendy's coattails? He said car? that. He said that when I went to the beauty parlor. He said, when she goes up, I'm going right up with, I'm going to be right there with her. Is that not the definition of a coattail ride? He said it. But, but here's what I'll say. A nigga can only do what you let them do. That's called a transactional relationship. She needed muscle. She needed a bulge. She needed security. He wanted celebrity. He wanted to be Mr. Wendy Williams, transactional love. In real life, it happens every day. Y'all may not break down y'all relationships to figure out whether or not y'all are in a transactional relationship, but I guarantee the majority of us are. He does this for me, so I don't mind doing that for him. She does that for me, so I don't mind doing that for her. Transactional relationships, but they don't end well all the time. Anonymous again, Skeletor. <laughs> Did Hi, you, producer. Were you in the, were you in the studio? when Wendy interviewed Whitney Houston? Uh, that was at WBLS. And no, because at that time, I wasn't a part of Wendy's show anymore. Was now that Artie? I, that was, I believe, Artie or Trev Hollywood or something oh, like that. Trev, because, Trev. yeah, what up, Trev Hollywood? By then, I was like, uh, producing other shows on WBLS, so unfortunately, I wasn't there. Well, when tell you something about that Wendy thing. Wendy and Whitney was going at it. Not to be disrespectful, Whitney Rest called peace, Whitney. I love Whitney, Whitney. Whitney called me first. Whitney called you sound, first. I know I sound crazy with the I was the first pepper. Whitney Wait, she called first. you in Philadelphia. Were you in Philadelphia? No, Jill? I was on Hot were, 97 with Star and Buck Wild, and Whitney okay. called my house. Listen. Whitney, record rep, his name is Lionel Rodenauer, called uh -huh. me at my house because that morning I had talked about an article I read in the Inquirer about Whitney having her, bug, her drugs in a black onyx case, and I guess she had had it with me. Lionel was my friend. So Lionel, okay. Whitney on the phone with me, and he was like, Jonesy, Whitney is mad. She wants to talk to you. And she laid into me mm -hmm. and said, what is your utopia? Why are you always talking about me? And I, you know me, I let her go. I let her go because I wanted to have her call in the show the next morning, right? So mm -hmm, at the end mm -hmm. of her coming at me and saying all those things, I said, would you be willing to come on the air and say your side? She goes, I absolutely will. I said, can you call in the morning? I gave her the information. You know what happened? Mm -hmm. That fucking hater ass star, when I got to the station the next morning and told him, we bagged, I bagged a Whitney Houston interview. Mm -hmm. He destroyed her so bad on purpose that morning so Whoa. that she decided not to call in instead of him. But that was who start. That's whatever. But yeah, he sabotaged that. So the next day or the next week, mm -hmm. that's when Wendy got that shit. But I had her call. Wendy, Wendy, Whitney called my house first. But 
Uh, but, uh, what I was going to say, Jonesy, because you know every artist or whatever, I thought maybe it's like, okay, Whitney, call Hot 97 first, and then you're scheduled to call BLS next, and then no, you're scheduled to was, call no, Kiss that FM Whitney, like that. That was Whitney okay. in, a, you know, in a drug stupor. And for me, she had Lionel ride now or packed her through. Because like I said, mm -hmm. me and Lionel were very cool. And, oh, wow. And she agreed to call the next morning and Lionel was going to have her on the phone and she was going to call him to the show. Star fucked it up for me because he didn't want me to shine. It would have been one thing if he had gotten the interview, but he didn't want me to win. But weren't you on the same show together? It didn't matter. He was oh, always operating okay. with Wendy and Kevin to tear me down. Star was oh, always, it's that wow. whole, the enemy of my enemy is my friend shit. So he was working against me on his own show to let Wendy get all the stuff and Jonesy get nothing. And I don't know why, except wow. that he wanted me to kind of submit and I'm just, I'm not built like that. Sorry. Wow. I'm a, I'm a wow. But yeah, people still to this day talk about that Wendy and Whitney interview, like it happened. Like, yeah, but you know what? Like, but they're both, they were both drugging. So like for Whitney, for Wendy to sit there and go at Whitney about doing the same shit she did, that's why when you falling out in Statue of Liberty outfits on national TV, niggas ain't shedding a tear. So uh, the producer here once again, because <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to get bulge because uh, Trance Phillips is trying to come at me because I missed a few of their questions. I don't oh, know. she's overwhelmed because we're bullying her from our phone. So please give her a break. She's getting laid out on our phone. <laughs> I think I need bulge. I think I need bulge. Scal, you know his number? Okay. Go ahead. So, no, uh, there's no bulge. There's no bulge. <laughs> bulge is a lie. Oh, <laughs> uh, <is it> <laughs> Philip wants to know, Phillips wants to know, what happened to Artie, the one who started the phrase, how you doing? Artie, the life of the party. He came from Philadelphia to, he came, Wendy, but do you him, know what happened? Because I, I know that after he got let go from Wendy's show, do you know mm -hmm. the story? Uh, no, all I know is when I met him, it was like, this is Artie from Power 99 or Philadelphia, and now we were at BLS. That's it. That's all well, I know. I know what that was the after, story, after she got done with him, Artie called Ebro to produce my show because I was in transition and looking for another producer. And Ebro oh, said, wow. Ebro, this is how shady Ebro is. And I love him, but he was like, we don't want none of that BLS, Wendy Williams shit, keep it moving. Go on, go on, go on. He wouldn't even entertain. He wouldn't even allow me. <laughs> he wouldn't even allow me to entertain. He was like, nope, we ain't taking none of that. Wendy Williams, none of that shit. Nope, go on. So he did try a few times, but yeah. I was like, Ebro usually knows what's best, at least for me, because he saw, he knows my little crazy. And that probably wouldn't. Okay. Be yeah, so. He did try to come over, and rightly so. And, and, and a lot of a lot of like radio is like, if I can't work at BLS, I'll try to go to Hot, or I'll try to go right. to Power. Like behind the scenes, you're doing your own hustling, and like, hello, I'm trying, you know. So right, but wow, but that wow. Was, I well, didn't know that. Oh yeah, Ebro shut that down. He didn't want no BLS affiliations, no nothing, no nothing. Not yeah. Really. Okay, anonymous here again. Is Wendy trying to sell us that she was a some strong black woman controlling Kevin from behind? She was. And I'll tell you this because the night I was leaving to go to Philly, I had I was doing a Sunday night countdown show on Hot 97. And straight from there, I was leaving to go to Philadelphia. And Kevin came to the studio because he wanted to manage me. And I thought that awfully odd that all of a sudden you go from talking shit about me in your books, talking shit about me in the streets to wanting to be my manager. But he was like trying to sell me on his management skills and his phone kept ringing. And I noticed him step away, but I could hear Wendy's voice on the other line. So I said, this bitch is telling this nigga what to say to seal the deal so that they can become my managers. And I said, and they only wanna be my managers so they can, they can control me from competing against Wendy in the market. I'm not a dummy. So he kept stepping away from the table, stepping away from the table. And I just have to wonder 
if that wasn't the same thing throughout her career, because Wendy is brilliant. She just needed someone, Kevin, to be the middleman. She knew who needed to be called. She knew who to reach out to at Fox. She knew how to do it. You just can't do it as an artist or as the star. And Kevin was right there and Wendy gave him the script, which is why you'll see in the movie, she says, Kevin thinks that he did the deal for me to come back to BLS. He doesn't know that I actually sealed that deal the week before. And then she looks in the camera and goes, hmm, so now you know, boo. She doesn't say boo, but she says, so now you know. So yeah, yeah, he was just the, the go-between. That's it. Wendy was the brain behind this whole operation. Can we just give wow. it up for black women right now? So uh, Michelle is asking, Michelle G, what was the beef between Wendy and Diddy? <sighs> well, it was because Wendy always was saying he was gay or bisexual, whatever it was, and he didn't like it because that doesn't go far in hip hop. And he used his money and his muscle to try and muzzle her by putting pressure on our boss, Tracy. And, oh, we're not going to perform at Summer Jam. Hi, Tracy. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do, she don't speak to me. We're not going to do Summer Jam. We're not going to, I'm not going to have my artists come up there until you do something about Wendy. And you know, Wendy was on that gay rapper shit for way too long, if you ask me. So that was the beef between them. But you know what the gag is? She won. They thought that they would run her out of town. And they certainly did. Hot 97 at least put her on ice and they thought that was going to be it. She fucking won. Wendy won. Say what you want, but she won. We're here at what time at night on a Friday night talking about her ass and not and in a bad way. And movie's coming out tomorrow. Right, this bitch got Wendy movies. Movie. She won. Tracy and Judy, uh, Diddy, none of them don't have movies. Although... Diddy, I am here for your documentary, boo. Revolt. Okay, Jonesy from Vita. Vita wants to know, Jonesy, did Wendy and Kevin get you a show on BET that never came out? No, they didn't get that for me. My friend from college, Connie Orlando, who I think is vice president of programming at BET, she got me the show. And what happened, what had happened was, I didn't realize that BET- What happened was. I didn't realize BET was such a fan. It was Reggie Hudlin from the Hudlin Brothers. He was running BET at the time. I didn't realize they were a fan. So Connie said, my boss wants to meet with you. So I went in and met and they were like, we want to do a show with you. We're not exactly sure what that show looks like, but we definitely want to be in business with Miss Jones. Now, mind you, this is a month before I'm about to leave Hot 97 and have my son, but no one knows because I hid this pregnancy kind of, no one knew. So when I got in the meeting, I was like, oh my God, I would love to do a show. This is prior to Keisha Cole. I would love to do a movie, but I have to be honest with you, I'm pregnant. And they were like, we love babies at BET. Would you let our cameras come into the delivery room? Would you let us document your pregnancy? And I said, yeah, but I'm also about to leave Hot 97. They're like, can we document your exit and the start of your new life as a wife? Would your husband be on board? And I was like, sure. That afternoon, they had a contract to my lawyer, Lisa Davis. And I have to admit, I held up holding out for more money because I'm not doing all that shit for $1,500 an episode. <laughs> but they brought the cameras in the next week. And then somehow, I don't know if it was flex, I don't know what it was, but Hot 97 decided to speed up my exit. So where I was really supposed to have two more months, they decided once the cameras came in, oh, all right, let's wrap this up. So you interpret what you like from that. I know I was leaving anyway. And then after I left, Reggie Hudlin left BET. So yeah, they had nothing to, to answer your, to the point, they had nothing to do with my deal at BET. And for you to ask that means, you know somebody, you know somebody. Jonesy, what was the name of your show gonna be on BET? I don't know. I, we oh, okay. didn't even get that far. Okay. They just said, we okay. love babies. We want to do the show. And they sent the contract. And I was like, y'all got to give me at least five grand. And then that, everything happened. But for gotcha. a reason. Because here we are, me and Skeletor. Boom. Jonesy, what's good? 
Well, reunions, reunions. It's a Friday night. We're Everybody talking about reunions. Wendy's show on Lifetime, the movie tomorrow, the documentary. Then we're talking about Miss Jones. And when you hear us show. say kiss at them, feel free and to we hear us say kiss at them, have. take a drink. And, and wow, we're taking your questions in the chat, and we hope you're enjoying it. We're giving you what we have, and um, I know it's a lot more than you knew. So, where did we, we do all right, Josie. We did all right, right? We did good, know. right? Do we have any more audio, um, DB? Well, Jonesy, producer, listen, you guys, um, I'm I had an appointment or something. Bitch, like, I will fucking come through this motherfucking camera this and Friday come. night. I'm not this how you, how you, how do you even make plans? <laughs> I didn't know. Scale up. <laughs> so can I exit somewhere? Um, no, not yet. So from anonymous, yet. and the producer said no, Skeletor. So hey, who's listen, anonymous? Anonymous Who? wants to know. <laughs> okay. Do, do you think that My William Williams My will fault. ever return to radio? And Skell, would you produce her? I hope Wendy would. You know what? To be honest, Wendy said one time, like years ago, when I was her her intern at Kiss and then producer at Hot 97, she said like she pictures herself as uh, an older DJ, but she's working on like a talk radio station, like AM station, doing nothing but talk. She wouldn't want to do like music or anything like that. But I would I would jump at it if I had you know, if she did it and I had the opportunity to produce and press the buttons behind the scene and Go ahead, Scal. set bring, that up, set bring that the up. shenanigans and say, Hey, let's invite Jonesy and, and Michael Sean. Oh, that's too much. And envy and just yeah, everybody no, be on no, the radio no. at the same time and everything no, like that. Yeah, no, no, but no. yeah, I, I would definitely uh, produce Wendy. Wendy, uh, I'm and she happy needs for you. you. If she I'm did happy for back, you. She would need you. If she came back, I, she I can't you. wait to watch the movie again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow. Go ahead, Scout, uh, you little flat lever. Go ahead. I know you ain't going nowhere to but the club. Go ahead. And you shouldn't be going nowhere because it's COVID. Mm. Why Where do you, you think? Going? Where are you going? Out. Where are you going? Streets. Heavy. <laughs> That's the you could take the boy out of Patterson. Oh, but you can't take the Patterson out the. Ever, ever, and I'm here for it. We have a last Scal. question. We have a last question before Scout exits from Nicole Dimby. Uh, you've both been around Wendy online and offline, on air and off air. Does she show us our persona, or is that her authentic self? Hmm. Um, hmm. Well, well, now she has uh, no choice. I think up until now, you got the entertaining side of her with gossiping about other people's shit. And even when it got to hers, she shifted and moved around it until she couldn't no more. And I think now, only now that she couldn't run from it, are you getting the complete real? I'll say like, um, you know what? I'll say like Jay Smith just said, that's a good question. Uh, when I was her intern at KISS, it was to me looking like from that perspective on the other side of the console board and everything, I'm like, she is putting on a show. Like, whoa, like this lady is like, she is really doing it like that. And then she got more into it and it, it became like her, her, her job, she would say like, it was her job before the internet to bring all that juiciness to the radio and stuff like that. And people would always say like, yo, Scale, is Wendy really like that or so? And I'd be like, yo, Wendy And they're gonna cool. see that in the documentary because they're gonna see oh. all of all those personalities. All right, can I ask a question? What is her brother doing? Don't be coming out after mommy dies, showing out and carrying on in funerals and then saying, oh, she didn't stay. Bitch, you almost knocked mommy out the casket. What am I staying for? Can y'all chat me, please? Chat, chat, please, somebody. Scale, you ain't hear about that? About her, her brother. brother. I, I heard her brother is, has on um, rampage. He's on a rampage about, about leaving the funeral and not wanting to stay. And she said, I didn't stay because you punched our cousin in the mouth and almost mocked, knocked mommy out the casket. Oh, oh my, oh my God. Who's staying for that? So that the tabloids can pick that shit up, I would have left too. Mommy Whoa. knows your heart. 
what in the whatness? Ex- wow. <laughs> Say that again. I was like, what in the whatness? Oh, wow. <laughs> God, what in the whatness? No. Wow. Yeah. Um, she wow. had a hard time getting guests on her show. Were they scared? Yes, nobody wants to be exposed. You never and Wendy had no filter, so you never knew. So, you know, that yeah, that's why she had a hard time. But you gotta trick them, you gotta lull them to sleep, and then hit them with the he. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Josie, you off the hook. Oh what my about god, mentioning her name in his song. Does Jay dislike her? I don't know. He's so wealthy right now. He's loving everyone. But, but I'm if sure you, it, it, oh, go, Jonesy, go ahead. I'll, no, um, you know, did Jay Z have a problem with her? Did you guys have a problem with Jay Z? Jonesy, you, you talking to me? Nigga, yeah. Oh, who, who else you talking to? <laughs> No, I was going to say, but if you notice that a lot of people started putting Wendy's name in her in their songs and stuff like that. Like, you know, uh, isn't she Mariah Carey is Wendy's name is mentioned. Um, like Jay-Z. Uh, they have, was there a moment? Was there a call to, on the warm line that we don't know uh, about that Jay-Z made or Sean Prez? I mean, not Sean Prez, Sean Pecos made to say, yo, easy on Jay. I, I don't even remember, Jonesy, to be honest. I don't, I don't need a segment. I'm going to do a segment on my show called The Warm Line. That warm line used to blink, blink, blink. The oh warm my God, line, what, what you guys don't know, is a line exclusive the warm line. for our bosses. Or, to the studio. Or, or special talent, right? Into the no, studio. wait, Jonesy, no. It was, the warm line was like your friend uh, calling you like, the, the artist. artist told me, but the, the hotline hot line, was, was the, the hotline was the bosses. Was the boss. When and that they, hotline rang, don't you let that shit that ring. Hotline. Let, it was a red light. It was a red light. It didn't even ring. It was a that red light. That meant red a light, red light, no green light. I'm about to give you tickets. Yeah. <laughs> You're going down. <laughs> you gonna have to breathe into this shit to drive again. <laughs> suspend it. Suspend it for three days <laughs> right. off the air. So, yeah. Any other wow. questions? Any other questions? This is fun. Kiss FM. Drink. Drink up. Drink up. I've had this Mountain Dew now for like three and a half hours. That shit is hot. And Mountain Dew is hot. Already like borderline, like, like very, ve- oh, wait, we love Mountain Dew. Hopefully there'll be a sponsor Mountain Dew is of the Miss Jones in the Morning well, Reunion. Come. On the YouTube. <laughs> come Mountain With Michael Dew. Michael Sean. And DJ Envy of the Breakfast Club. Can I ask a question? Josie, this is funny. Jay Smith said, add ice to it and keep it going. Exactly. And a little bit of vodka. But I got to go out. And a little bit of vodka. Set your I got to go down. out. Get a designated driver. I got to go. All right. Yo, this is a once in a lifetime. Go ahead. You want to be a flat lever? And, and go hey, ahead. Hey, we're going to continue it tomorrow. No, I got to go out tomorrow. <laughs> All of, all of a sudden, I have all, all right, well, you I'll, gotta see, go. I'll see you no. tomorrow then. We'll we'll pick up tomorrow. And guess what, guys? If you want, you can send us, um, you can email me at the Miss Jones. <laughs> listen, the Miss Jones Project, M-I-S-S, the Miss Jones Project at gmail.com. That's my email for you. And you can say, email me any questions or something, because we'll come back tomorrow. And we'll talk some more. But honestly, Scout, I think we need to do this after. Okay, after I the movie. We need to do it at seven. I think we should do it after. Is that possible? You know what? No. Um. No. What we could do, Jonesy? I just had a brainstorm. We could do it at seven, right? Start right. at seven or so, and then like break. Go watch the movie. Soon as it's over, boom, back at it to like but three, you know, four o'clock two. in the morning. They're gonna do the biopic, and then they're gonna do the documentary. Right. So after. After the biopic and so after like, the documentary, so we're, we're ready. The, we're the o'clock. hotel. We're the hotel. We're not the after party. We're the hotel. Right. Seven o'clock, break, watch it, eat, drink, do whatever. 11 o'clock, boom, back at it. And but then I, I can only stay until like 12. Wait. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you no. up. <laughs> you Listen, you're not penciling me in your motherfucking schedule. It's Jonesy. been over 20 years and I haven't seen you. I know. You. I ain't seen you in so long. I need more Jonesy. of you. You can't do this to me. Um, 
I had a question, but I forgot. Um, the email, Are you guys satisfied? Like, have we answered your question? Is this good? Like, did we do good? I know. Someone, someone I, I think we're doing happened. good. Wait, think, what? Someone, uh, your uh, producer voice here. Someone would like your email. Please repeat oh. the email or so I can put it in the chat. It's My the email. Oh, oh, sorry. oh, wait, go oh, ahead. Go, oh. Skell. Uh, well connected with Skeletor at Blog Talk Radio. How you spell Skeletor? I'm spelling it um S S K E L E T O R. That's how I spelled it. Bam. All right. All you right. Lose. And my email is. But Bob. then again, I can. Oh. Skell, ahead, shut Jones. up. Sorry, Jones. My email is the. Miss M I S S Jones Project at gmail.com. The Miss Jones Project at Gmail. Okay. Yes. Did you say we can listen anytime? Yeah, you can because we're taping it on Sunday and then I'm editing it Sunday after that and I got to have my nap and then it'll be uploaded definitely by midnight. But it might be Sunday night, like around 10 p.m., 9 p.m. You might be able to hear. The Josie, first how, how did you get in touch with Michael Sean to, um, for him to be on your reunion show and everything like oh, that? This, this is hilarious how this happened. And I don't want to give everything he away. Is, so, Michael Sean is so hilarious. Mary was doing a wine tasting for my, there's an organization I'm in. And she uh -huh. was doing a wine tasting. And I knew I was going to do a podcast by myself. So uh -huh. I called Mike Sean and I said, Mike, can you, I said, how are you? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Can you help me come up with the top five reasons why Mary should not be having a wine? And Michael and, Sean is hilarious. And, and Michael Sean said, you know what's so funny? I just got let go from my job. <laughs> and I said, no. He said, I literally just walked out of the office. Like, and, you, and you're on my phone. <laughs> And he said, which is crazy because every time I've gotten let go of a job, you always hire me. Like you're always there to hire me. And so I said, okay, well, I'm planning to do a podcast and I'd like you to write for me. And mm -hmm. then it wasn't until, well, you have to listen Monday to find out how okay. thing, but yeah. So I've always had his number. Wow. He wow. was in Texas blowing shit up. Big shout out to Mike Sean. Michael Sean. Oh yes, oh yes. Mike, He's naturally funny. He don't have to try. He, he is hilarious. He used to be on the he, uh, when we're at Philly one hundred three point nine. Right. He was there yeah. when I got there. Yeah. I I would come on six to ten, and he was right after me at ten yep. o'clock. Yeah. It was off the hook. I love. The listen, hook. I used to do mornings, and uh -huh. then I would come back to the station at ten o'clock just to sit in the studio with him. I could imagine that, Jonesy. Yeah, Mike Schwann is the truth. He's naturally funny. Like, he doesn't he try. He doesn't, he doesn't just make up bits. He makes funny of what is actually going on in real life. Michael Schwann, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Scal. Because you, right now, you you distracted. Go, get on out of here. Wait, wait, wait. Let, what? Last question, last question. Scal, how did you get your name? Uh, my, what name? Trevor? Skeletor. Oh, my bad. I'm not this focused. Is, and right? This is why Artie got the job, bitch. This ah. is, this is why I got the name Skeletor when I was an intern for Wendy at Kiss FM, and um, I went name? out. Huh? Who gave you the name? If I want to say, Kooji Rap. Oh, I love him. I want to say Kooji rap. Like I was hanging out with Wendy one night after the show and we were hanging out and, and we you ain't seen none of the Coke. Red light. See, red light. <laughs> Your tickets will be in the mail. And that's why I'm leaving right now. Cause you don't know how to act when I'm trying to tell the story. <laughs> Josie, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. I love you guys. Give it up for Watch Skeletor. Watch Wendy's movie, the biopic, the documentary. We'll talk tomorrow. Jonesy, I love you. Reunion show. Thank you, producer. Have a good night, everybody. Shadow Pussy. I love you. We need the applause. I have the applause. Wait, they're in my other phone. We'll have them tomorrow. <laughs> but for now, I love Scott. <laughs> he said, he said, 
Willie Jones? <laughs> he thought about it. <sighs> All right. If there are any other chat questions that I can be of use for before I just go start totally hard promoting myself, don't y'all love my little promo videos? Bitch, tell me my promos don't give y'all motherfucking life every morning before you wake up. It's a new one. How about the one with the guy putting up the billboard post of me and Wendy? Ooh, how you doing? How you post to putting up? Skeletor is still here. Skeletor, you leave it or you stay? What you doing? <laughs> he can't oh, leave because he I'm knows leaving. we need him. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, Skeletor, love you. Be careful out there. Let me, let me remove him. Bad. Stay positive. Stay positive and test negative, Scal. All right, Jones, rapid fire. You ready? Yes, I guess. What happened to Mother Knows and you, Miss Jones, for pow from Power 99? I don't know. The day I got fired, Mother Knows never called me, haven't spoken to, doesn't call me now, have no idea. Done. Okay, next one. We got to come back. This is a comment. We got to come back tomorrow at midnight. Done. Uh, Rashawn White, does she watch any of the other talk shows? Who is she? Wendy? Or, why, oh, why, you mean like the Housewives? Oh, why doesn't Wendy watch talk shows? Why I don't know. Because I don't even watch Wendy's show. I don't. And you know why? You can't just be trying to have me kill, bitch, and think I'm going to be there at 10. Miss Jones, will you go back to, to terrestrial radio? Mark Frazier. Yes. From Nick. Hi, Miss Jones. Do you, do you think you want to do music again? Yes. I'm actually coming out with an album. If you have tracks, please. I need five songs, party songs, roller skating songs. I already have one from Ron G, one from DJ SNS. So please get at me at the Miss M I S S, the Miss Jones Project at gmail.com and send your motherfucking best. All right, we're gonna jump over. Roberto Hunt, what happened to Kim Allen? Next. Kim King. Kim is always trying to sell. Sponsorship fee is in the in the mail. Kim wants to know, remember when you were promoting that fur fashion warehouse? Yes, fur fashion, yeah. LOL, you're the reason I got my first fur, thanks. Bitch, you better give me the animals. You bet, I need a picture. Can you take, first of all, I'm glad I broke your fur cherry and congratulations. And aren't they such nice guys? Like they don't just try to get your money. Like they try to make you get in something that looks good on you. Can you please take a picture? Send it to the Miss Jones Project at gmail.com so I can post it, boo. Hey. Miss Jones, why don't you watch talk shows? Um I watch the the um I watch the housewives and all all of that stuff. I watch that. I just you know, it was hard. It's even hard. I don't I didn't even listen to radio when I left because it was just hard listening when people thought I got fired. And then when I did actually get fired, it was hard to listen because I feel like I got fired for no reason. And I'd go into it now, but I saved, I'm saving it for my show on Monday, all the misconceptions and the, I'll be honest with you on Monday, but um, it was hard. It was just hard to listen. And I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, and Wendy's, I love, um, I won't listen to um, watch Wendy because I love Let's Make a Deal. That's my shit. Wayne Brady's my baby daddy. So um, Denise is really a troublemaker. Who really knows if Wendy is really a woman? I'm no, stop. Be nice. Woman. Be nice because you're born how you're born. You look how you look. And imagine having to carry that burden all these years. Be nice, Denise, with the shade. Be nice. I'll tell you when I need you. I'll tell you when it's time to stab, Denise. Stand by and stand back. Right. <laughs> New Battle has, has three questions back. Hey, back. Denise, proud girl, stand back <laughs> and stand by. <laughs> Go ahead, because I know Wendy going to have something to say, and I'm going to need Denise. Go ahead. 
barbecue battle. Miss Jones, would you ever come back to take a job at Power 105? If you were asked, we miss you in New York. And she also said, did you ever get, did you, did you ever get one of those fur coats that were stolen at Jimmy's Uptown? <laughs> no, I didn't get the fur coats. I didn't. And yes, I would come back because I love Thea. And, um, but I don't know where, because Angie seems to be doing a great job in afternoons unless Charlemagne leaves. And then I don't know if they would have two women and Envy, right? So I don't know, where would I fit? I don't know. What, let me tell you what needs to happen. BLS is cleaning house. What they need to do is bring me over there to tear shit up in the mornings and I'll be good. They won't have to worry about lawsuits in my mouth because I can be compelling and funny without being, uh, what's the word? Being um, like costly and stuff like that. But they need to remember that even though BLS started with our parents and their, and their music, Marvin Gaye and all that, we are the older people now. And we want to hear CL Smooth and Pete Rock and we want to hear um, Lil Mo and Black Girl and In Vogue and there's no station. You either go from old people Steve Harvey or young people Power 105 or Hot 97. So I think BLS needs to bring Jonesy in the morning in and let me do what I need to do and get them right. From Mitch, Mitch K, who were your DJ idols? Hey, Mitch, I'm not going to blow up where I know you from. DJ idols. I really wasn't into radio. I tell you, I was up there promoting my record and Steve Smith said, I want to give you a show. And I said, no, I'm going to be a big star. I don't need this. So I have to say Wendy. Well, not only because she became my girlfriend and she was so funny and entertaining and engaging. So yeah, just Wendy. From Anonymous again. Hey, Jonesy, we need you back on New York radio. What's good, Ma? Hey, boo, let's start a petition. Let's take them all down. Listen, email me at the at gmail.com. We can get this shit in motion. It's time for black women to take our rightful spots at the top of the throne and stop being, listen, if men, it, this, I said the same shit Charlemagne says first. I get fired and he's a fucking hero. Now, I'm glad he's getting coin. I have no problem with Charlemagne. I never met him. But anyone that can outlast Kevin is my hero. But I'm just saying, Stern, Charlemagne, all the guys get to say whatever. The minute a chick does, it's you're out. You're out. Me and Wendy, you're out. Go to Philly, go do whatever. She won by default. And I will too, if need be. But yeah, I need to be back on New York radio. So Q Battle said, <laughs> take pro style spot. Uh, 10 to 2 p.m. or... Angela Yee, kick off the Breakfast Club. No, we're not kicking off nothing. Let shit blow up organically. I mean, wait, I don't mean blow up. <laughs> Let shit fall apart organically. Right now, I'm not trying to be in anybody's building anyway, because I'm not catching COVID for nothing and nobody. But thank you. And the other thing we have to remember, y'all know I have this tumor. Y'all know I have this condition, which is, you can see Puffy. I had this, I can't, I think when I worked in Philly the last time and they refused to hire me a co-host and I had to do extra talking, that's why the tumor comes back. So I like, I'm in so much pain most of the day and I'm on painkillers and stuff like that because this tumor in my, in my jaw, it takes me down. So just get me a co-host if you want me to come back and let me try to get my life back. But I couldn't do it by myself. Uh, we miss you, Joan. Um, Q battle now uh, from Jay Smith is the new morning show reunion sh is the reunion show a daily show not and yet it's once it's just once a week for now because <sighs> there's a lot of stuff we have to work through like we love each other like we have so many secrets that we couldn't tell because we needed our checks that we're about to tell we're telling everything from hot 97 we're telling everything from tsunami we're telling. So let's see. And I know Dr. Jeff's coming in to help fix our life. So what that Zayama's thing? <laughs> She's unavailable. Dr. Jeff's going to come in and help us 
work out things. Because there were things and we're past them, but you know, sometimes. So let's see how it goes. Let's see how it how it pans out. And then hopefully maybe we'll do more. Just remember your producer was always kind to you, no matter what they say. All righty. So desirable accessories. <laughs> Why is your hair on sleep on slaying like Michelle Obama? Are you you gonna be the next meme? You are Stacy. I love you, Stacy. Stacy's been my friend since my first go around in Philly. She was part of my Jonesy and the Pussycats organization. I started 500 women. We did community service down and, um, and then we became friends and we've maintained our friendship through these 12 years. And she'll actually be a vendor at our founders day tomorrow. So nigga, you better get in the bed. Cause, and I want a Jonesy discount. All right. Um, are we going to get more music from Jonesy? New music, new music. Yes. And I'm, like I said, I'm doing an EP, a five song EP, because I'm trying to put everything out at once. But again, I gotta, I gotta take it easy because my mouth be, I don't know. I've had this condition, you guys know, since I was like 12 years old and it flares up. So that's the other reason why I wasn't in such a rush to come back on the scene. Cause I just be in so much pain all day. And then these kids, no disrespect, I'm not saying. Anonymous is back again and as messy as ever. We love Anonymous. Did Mary sleep with Ghostface Killer? I don't know who what that, that has to do with women. Who, no, look. Who, who, would, we, would we even care? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I'll tell you this about Mary. She's another Phoenix rising. This is a season of Phoenixes rising. If Wendy can rise from Kevin and that motherfucking Ken don't, we told her, y'all remember, we cracked on his ass. We told her, just like we told Usher, don't fuck with regular dudes. Don't fuck with regular broads. And look what happened. Now he got her. Ken don't got her paying him because the marriage didn't work out and paying his parents and paying his daughter. Like, fuck out of here. So now by default, I'm team Mary. <laughs> Who knew? Anonymous back again. Jones, do you get paid for streams? I play where I want to be, boy, and don't front on iTunes way more than I want to admit. <laughs> thank you. I do. I do. And thank you for that. Because that is how you get paid and your, you know, your kids will get paid and whatever. It's never anything crazy. It's never a crazy amount, but it's little groceries. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anonymous back again. Anonymous, anonymous. Just look, anonymous. Let me give you my number. I'm gonna just just call me, child, because <laughs> we gonna be here all night. What's the question, anonymous? <laughs> all those CDs, we wanna we wanna hear them. Okay. Let's, look, let's play some now. Ooh, Thank let's see what we have. The producer. Uh, while you're looking for those Scudo CDs, Jason. No, no they're actually right here. <laughs> Cause I was listening for more clips, but then I needed my nap. Hey, girl, I forgot her name. We were just talking about her the other day and I was saying, I love her. You know, just, 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 you know. But I mean, what are you supposed to do when you have millions of dollars and you're a teenager? Wouldn't you have gone wild? Think honestly about it. I would have, I would probably be dead by now. Mm. Yeah. You know, I would have, you know, railed my Ferrari through a divider or something all, you know, drunk up but shout out to all the good teenagers and i know that you're out there god only knows how you are able in this society we live in to stay on the straight and narrow and really listen to and fear your parents and and really want better for yourself i had to grow into that kind of kind of um maturity it didn't come on me until i had the baby okay until i started to say no that's when it came on me but as a teenager, I'd be dancing on the tables and wearing belly shirts. And, you know, if I had millions of dollars, being nasty to people, all that stuff. <laughs> oh. She said she'd be nasty Hillary to Duff, people. Hillary Duff, rare good girl, my behind. Hello? 
Hey, Wendy, how are you? Hi, I'm doing fine. How are you? Good. This is Rachel calling from um, Stanford, Connecticut. Hi, Rachel. Hi. I just wanted to confess real quick to you that I am in love with you. I think you're doing a fantastic job, and I just regret the fact that I didn't get to talk to you that time when you came to Connecticut, like, three years ago or something. It's three years ago. <laughs> What was that, at a club? Yes, in Norwalk. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think you remember that time, too. Yeah. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, you no. are, I'm addicted. She's lying. And Rachel. all I do, I, I take my lunch break right around 2 o'clock just so I could, like, sneak you in for a half an hour. Well, so. you know what, Rachel? I'm always dragging my knuckles in these here streets. So <laughs> I will be up there at some point or another to the Norwalk area, and, and you'll be the first to know because I'll shout out on the radio, okay? All right, thanks. Thank Keep you, Rachel. good work. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. She's a convert. Hello? Hi, Wendy. How Hi. are you? I'm doing fine. I'm so blessed to meet you. My well, name is L I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, my name is Liz from Springfield, Massachusetts. And I was wondering if you um, had heard anything about what went on with 50 Cent over this weekend. Yep, we talked about it yesterday. That was our competitor station um, that that put on that show. And, and we talked about it yesterday. Were you there? Yes. Well, yes, I am here, Mitt. So yeah, just to I'm, let I'm you know, I'm, I'm going to be going through all these. <laughs> I'm serious about y'all meeting me back here Friday nights. Like, let's make it a thing. Like, let's make it a conversations with Miss Jones on Fridays at seven, right? Like, don't we owe it to ourselves to revisit all of these conversations with Wendy so we can kind of get a better gauge and a clearer perspective of what she went through? Some people only saw her when she popped up on TV. Be grateful. I've got the lost tapes. Have you ever thought about serious radio? I did. And the guy I spoke to was blocking me. Like I called over there and he was like, oh my God, I'm such a fan. Send me your stuff. And I did. And then he never responded. And then I emailed again. He never responded. Then I found out he's on the air there. So I was like, oh, I see what that is. Program directors trying to compete with the talent. Don't want real talent coming in. So maybe I should revisit it again. Right? Maybe. I don't know. I'm just here. Loving the fact that y'all are here with me. That's it. Will you be doing interviews on your YouTube show? I absolutely will. We were actually, this is so funny, we were supposed to be doing a Valentine's Day promotion with Trey Songs. He fucked that up. <laughs> I'm sure you saw the news, but yeah. And um, and we'll be talking to 50 because he's got the new power um installment. And uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. COVID be damned. There will be interviews. What's your relationship with Doug E. Fresh today? Oh my God. I love him so. I love him so much. I can't be saying this stuff though. Oh my God. And he loves me too. We love each other. We have such a love story. You weren't here last week for salt and pepper, I presume, or you wouldn't have had to ask that question because it was just a love story pouring out. DB, tell them about the, tell them how much he's still in love with me. Yeah. That's not convincing. Listen, she doesn't have to say it, but I know it. He's still in love with me. He let me use his song on my promo for free. The 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 Wendy Jonesy. Dun, 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 dun. And if that ain't love, I don't know what it is. But yeah, I'm sorry. I got a little <laughs> my heart skipped the beat. All right. I think we're going to pull that out. So let's jump on to this next question so we can let you reminisce a bit. Okay. Um, speaking of Syracuse. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Never too far. Let's go orange. Clap, 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 clap. Let's go orange. Go ahead. <laughs> Have you spoken to Tiffany Pollard, New York, after her lying about going there? That was hilarious. Who does that? Who doesn't research the show you're going on, the most exciting radio program that you're going on? You don't research that the host of the show went to the, the college of the town you're in and you come on and lie? That was corny. That was lazy. You see, I'm digging out CDs from Wendy shows 
from the 90s. That's the work. I don't take you guys for granted that you're just going to listen to listen. She took y'all for granted, thought she was going to play y'all out and skate by and get a little airtime on Hot 97 and la da da da. Fuck all that. Nope. Rewind, Dougie Fresh. He still loves me. Can I tell you what I do? I be blocking Doug because he be getting on my nerves because he knows me so well. But then I unblock him the night before my birthday every year because I know he calls like clockwork. He's always the first call I get at midnight. And then after we do our little thing, then I block him again. <laughs> but now him and my son, Jalen, who's really his son, but don't tell him that because we're not trying to. Him and Jalen are like this. Like, it's crazy. They're like this. They be on the phone on Instagram all night like this. But keep my secret, guys, because I'll know if you told. When did you first meet Wendy? I first met Wendy when I went on her show in 1994 or three, promoting my single because it won the play it or what was it? Play it or slay it or beat it. Or, it was something or something. And I won it. And she was like, all right, we have to have her up here then. So that was the first time. And then I had no idea that Kiss was going to buy or Hot 97 was going to buy Kiss. So when they did that, she came over. She was one of the shows that they kept because a lot of people like um, Bal Baltazar, his show got let. Remember Baltazar? A lot of shows got let go. So then we used to hang up, hang out because I did Sunday mornings and then she would come in right after me. And sometimes she'd be so drunk. That she'd be like, Jones, be careful of the vomit in the elevator on your way down. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? She's like, I'm just saying, ah, too many mudslides. That was her favorite drink back then. Going back to your Philly days, are you still cool with Mikey Dread from Power 99? I am cool with all of them because um, I have no reason not to be. And yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. And I don't have a problem with mother knows. It's just that I just don't get how you give people jobs and you get fired and they stop talking to you. I don't get that, Kim Allen. I don't get that mother knows, don't get it. But maybe it's not to be gotten. Do you think Wendy told her story honestly? I do. And yep, I do, I do. And you always have to keep a little because you always need that part too, right? And she's a businesswoman. So yeah, I love the movie, both of them, but I love the documentary more. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna double down on that. Can I put the Syracuse thing down now? Are we done? Yes. With the pro, <laughs> you saw how quick I was able to get it though, right? Yeah, I love the, um, the documentary. And I think there are more documentaries coming down their pipe more relevant documentaries for, I mean not that this these aren't relevant but I'm saying more like stories of artists that we know rest in peace Cicely Tyson we went the whole night and didn't even acknowledge her journey and her success and her imprint rest in peace thank you for the the journey and the barriers we appreciate your skill your art we love you anonymous again did Kevin Calvin try to sleep with you no, never. Kevin hated me from the gate. <laughs> I think when I went to his beauty parlor and didn't let them do my hair, <laughs> I think that, you know, but yeah, no, never, 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 never tried to sleep with me. Never made an advance at me, never anything. Do you think the side chick being basic did something to Kevin's ego? That fucking bitch. Ego. I don't like that bitch. Yes, don't all basic chicks do something to a weak man's ego? See, he knew he would never be able to wow Wendy. So weak men always need a weak bitch that's going to look up to them. That's just how the world goes. 
you need somebody that makes you feel like the hero. So you go get a lesser than bitch from the, the boondocks and then she needs you. So then you feel important and it's just, I can't. It's so, that story is so old with the, she made me feel like a man. She made me feel special. She made me feel important. That's all it is. I give her two years and she gonna leave with half that $10 million that he got from Wendy. Next. Wendy always tells celebrities to marry up a duke, a prince, or just a millionaire. Will she marry up? I don't know. I hope so. But Wendy's got a strong personality and someone's got to be the bitch. So I don't know. I don't know that she's capable. <laughs> She's like the alpha, right? ZJ say, stated, remember when you were promoting those fat burner weight loss pills? Did they really work? Body solutions. Yes, they did. They really did. But then I think they got recalled. <laughs> I think they got recalled. But at that point, Star had fired me off the show. So I couldn't tell y'all that, yeah, Body Solutions actually did work. You know, I was always looking for a solution. Always. It was just great that a check was involved. But I was always, you know, you know, it never changed. Did you guys know that Salt was bulimic? I didn't know that. Until after years later, I didn't know. Do you think you could have played Wendy? No. Because I'm not an actress, actress. Like, I can do the hood movies with Beanie Siegel and Kevin Hart, all the little, uh, what's the movie? <laughs> the movies I did, but I'm not, mm -mm, no. I think the person that got the job was who was supposed to have the job and is opening it open. Even if she didn't do a great job, she's op she didn't do a bad job. We're not distracted by a bad performance. We're not. It's just them teeth. But who am I to talk? Because I still have a gap. So yes, thank you. No. Two way street was the jam. Thank you. Remember, thanks to Hisha Noni. Would you ever speak anonymous again? Anonymous. Yes, that's it. Just give anonymous the phone number. <laughs> Would you ever speak with Star again? Star actually called me years ago, like after I left somewhere. And he wanted me to do a show. He wanted me to be like a black Nancy Grace. And he was like, I have a vision for you. I think, you know, you're like that whole domestic violence thing. Like you can be the advocate for women in domestic violence. And I said, I think he was reading the blogs that said that I had tried to hit my husband with my car at that time. Um, he said, just you and a desk and a red phone. And he said, and bitches calling in with their problems. And I was like, are you ever going to apologize? Like, we just going to forget that you said my son was a downs baby. We going to forget all that shit. We going to forget all the commercials y'all used to run on Power 105 about my newborn son. Nah, I can't do it. Not going to be able to do it. What is your relationship with Funk Flex? Was he a hater of Miss Jones? I don't know if he was a hater of Miss Jones or he just wanted someone in that morning spot. Flex has sustained his career for a long time being smart. And he tried to get Cypher Sounds to be my co-host on my morning show, I think, because he knew there would be a lot of power. And, you know, we were friends, but we weren't allies. So sometimes he would be friends with, say, Fat Joe, and I would be friends with Remy. And at that time, Remy and Fat Joe were going at it. It would have been nice for Flex to have been able to have a Cypher Sounds in the morning show to kind of like make things nice. So I don't think he was necessarily a Miss Jones hater. And I actually just found out that he follows me on Instagram. So, and I appreciate the fact that Flex was the first person that brought me up to Hot 97 on the nighttime level. 
So I have no hate or no bad feelings at all. I get it. I get it. And he always shows me love. Last I saw him was at the R. Kelly concert. More of a comment. What started to envy with Sal? Yeah, but it started with me. Like, don't you think I deserve the $5 million? It started with me. I appreciate Envy jumping in and taking my back, but I should have gotten that money. Had I been in the right relationship with a nigga that thought like Envy, we would have gotten the money. I digress. Yes, it was foul. Kiss FM. What's your favorite Wendy, Biggie, Big Pun, and Heavy D memory? Wendy, my favorite memory. I have to think about that because there were a few. She was just silly. Wendy, <laughs> she's silly. And Pun, there wasn't one. Pun used to come to my house every day at the end of the day and we just hang out at my house on West End Avenue, 66th Street. That's the building that Faith and Biggie lived in also. And hang out. I just love everything about Pun. Ooh, I found unreleased music on a cassette tape. Apparently, there was supposed to be a second song that we were gonna do after Punish Me, but I have to ask Joey if he'll clear it for me to play it. Biggie, my favorite moment with him was, what's my favorite Biggie moment? We were backstage, I think it was in California, doing a show together. And obviously he was going on after me, but he just always was, he was comical. He was always a snapper. Um, and that night was no different. I love that these guys from the hood that you have a perception of being from the hood, they were brilliant. They were all smart. Him, Puff, Sean Prez, Craig Mack, Sleep in peace. They were really smart business people. Who named me Jonesy? No one asked me that. Who gave me the name Jonesy? Well, Anonymous is here and Anonymous has a name. Anonymous states, I'm sorry, I'm a huge fan. Did you, do you ever speak with a lover? I do not. I don't, but we were supposed to do a program together, a show together or something years ago. I just don't, I think he's an AT. Honestly, when I left that station in Philly and I got sick and had to have multiple surgeries on my jaw, like I really stepped away from everybody and I wasn't calling and they weren't calling. And so like, this is really, really, when I say a reunion and a comeback together, I didn't even see Envy or Michael Sean or speak to them in 10 years. So, and Ed wasn't in my immediate circle, but I always give him credit for allowing me to come on him, Lisa G and Dr. Dre's morning show and do my thing with my promo and my roll call because that's what got me. That is what got me the chance to do radio. That's when Steve Smith, the boss heard me on the Ed Lover show. So thank you, Ed. So Val is a newbie to the Miss Jones world. Val. Hey Val. Val W, I'm a new fan. I saw your post on DJ Envy's page for this event tonight. Can you please tell me a little bit about yourself and what to expect of your podcast? <laughs> you might not come back. <laughs> if I tell you everything, so I am I was originally a recording artist, and I don't know if you know my songs, a few of them, Where I Want to Be Boy, um, Love Somebody Else with Me and the Locks, Punish Me with Me and Big Pun, Holding It Down with Me and Big Al. Um, I did stuff with Doug, Busta, everybody. And then I started doing radio. And um, eventually I wound up getting my own morning show in Philly. And then Hot 97 asked me to come back and lead mornings in New York. So when I came back, Envy, Miss Info, Donnell Rollins were part of, they, they were there and they had tried multiple shows. And then when I came back, they wanted me to get rid of Envy, but I loved Envy because Envy was, he gave me some information that was crucial 
when I came back to New York. And, um, and so the show became Miss Jones in the Morning with DJ Envy. First it was Ebro, then it, Ebro went back to the office and it became Michael Sean. And so we, I have to say what you hear with the Breakfast Club is very, very Miss Jones in the Morning-ish. Except that there are different things because, you know, we had a comedian. So we laughed a lot and we, you know how Charlemagne is like the angry man? I'm, I was deemed like the angry chick, but I was also like a little funny and quirky. I wish we could, if you tune in on Monday, you'll get it. If you Google Miss Jones in the morning and listen to my interview with Keisha Cole, Usher, the band, all of that, big shout out to Babs, by the way. I love you, Babs, still to this day. Dylon too. Um, all of you guys, all of you guys in the band. Anyway, you'll get it. So people used to label me as a wannabe Wendy. I can't help that. We're just both strong, opinionated chicks. But the difference is Wendy read like a lot of magazines, tabloids and stuff like that. I was an artist, so I was there. I was at those events that the tabloids would write about. So I had a little deeper introspect, introspective look as to what was actually going on. So I was able to speak from that. So I was kind of like an insider because that was my scene. And um, when the show ended, we all went our ways. On a good term though, I went to Philly. Envy went to Power. Mike Sean went to K, I think it was K104 in Dallas. And it's just been years, but we still have, like, I think the show ended before we were ready to end with each other. But so, and V's wife did some show called Behind Every Man. And I happened to be watching and she filled my heart with what she said about me. And then that's really what started the premise of us re having a re reunion or reuniting. And you'll have to listen Monday to the, the the youtube show to find out everything i can't give everything away right now wendy final thoughts on the wendy williams i mean wendy jones final thought i'm doing the skeletor here final <laughs> thoughts on the wendy williams uh movie and biopic loved it hate it what did you like and last words I loved it. And I was so glad that I watched it first before Salt and Pepper. No disrespect to Sheldon Sandy, but <clears throat> it gave me, so I watched the biopic first. I didn't even know there was a documentary and the biopic was good, but then the documentary gave me everything I needed because didn't we, don't we really want to see, like Wendy spent a lot of time from what I hear on her show. Cause again, I didn't watch, I don't watch her show. I watch Wayne Brady, let's make a deal and it's okay. But didn't she spend a lot of years fronting? Even though you'll find out that she had hired a private investigator, she knew all along. So I give it five stars because she, she finally owned it and faced it and shared it with y'all, shared it with us. She shared it with us and she didn't have to. Nobody ever really does. So five stars all around the board. Last looks, last words, last words, Jones. The last, I hear a child. I hear footsteps of a child. Who is this? Hi guys. Hi, are you still doing this? Yeah, I'm about to give last, last words. Well, thank you to my son Jalen for saving the day because again, um, <clears throat> he made this hope it. You wanna come on? How does he put, I don't know how to pull it up. Nigga, we about to sign off and you want to get on? Shout out Darius. Oh, hey Darius. Hi. We're in my messy bedroom, sorry. Um, for a couple hours, by the way. Last, you was jumping on my car. I saw a video of you standing bro, on the hood of my car. About, my son makes records and him and his little raggedy ass friend Darius. Don't run Darius, I saw you out there too. They must have done some video today. That was cap. And bro. I meant to get at you, but you were so helpful, I forgot. Bro. We're gonna have a conversation. Bro. Last thoughts. Stay bro. positive and test negative. Monday, <laughs> the podcast, or tomorrow, we'll be back at seven, right? And then again at midnight, right? Doing it all again. Right? <laughs> Once again, it's the youngest in charge.
Thank you guys. I love you. I respect you for the time. I appreciate you. Please pull it down for a minute. I want to say I thank you. I so appreciate you. This is my first time out in over like 10 years. And I didn't know if you guys would show up. I didn't know. I just knew that I needed to share my relationship. And I appreciate y'all for coming and staying. And I hope you come back tomorrow, especially at midnight, because then you will have seen it and then you'll have more questions. But if you want to reach out to me, it's the Miss Jones Project at gmail.com, the Miss Jones Project. That's M I S S. Yes, I'm still going with the young girl, M I S S Jones Project at gmail.com comments thank you. i love the love thank you everybody for tuning in thank you keeper of the brand for making this whole thing happen thank you skeletor and thank you wendy for giving us something to talk about all right love you i'm out i'm done good night can i go it's you. FM. Drink your drinks. Arms of a strong hand. Big shout out to Rob Love, Ron G, and DJ SNS. Shout out to Carlos, making the magic happen. Those promos be fire. Big shout out to Alicia Hamry and the Hamry crew. Ooh, ooh. Big shout out to Piper. Big shout out to Shabri, Tanisha, Laria, Vanessa. Thank you, Alicia. Big shout out to my producer, Jay Black. Hey, boo. See you Sunday. Thank you, Jay. And pull it down again for a minute, D. Rest in peace, really, like peace. And you had an amazingly royal send off to my dear, dear friend from Philly, Kevin Parker, owner of Miss Tennessee's Restaurant. He was, when you talk about somebody that was selfless and just gave without telling people that he gave and showing up without being asked to show up, that was Kevin. He didn't die of COVID. I didn't even know he was dying because last we spoke in November, we were supposed, he was making plans with me. He died of cancer. And I think obviously he knew, but he didn't want that to be anybody's burden. So rest in peace to him and to your loved ones that have passed on from whatever it is that they passed on. I know we're quick to say, was it COVID? Was it COVID? But it really doesn't matter. So I give you strength in your loss. And I thank you for sharing your time with us tonight. Music play. Shout out to DJ Envy. Big shout out to his lovely wife, Gia. Gia, Gia. <laughs> Big shout out to Mike Sean and um, big shout out to Ebro. And um, thank you, Piper. Big shout out to Courtney. And I hope I'm not forgetting people, Tanya. A dot, thank you. Oh, she got disconnected, A dot. But while you were here, thank you for the love. All right, guys, that's it. I don't want to wear y'all out. Tomorrow at seven. Are we doing tomorrow at seven? Can y'all chat me right now and tell me if I should show up at seven or do y'all just want me to replay what we did tonight and then we show up at 12? We're taking it to the chat. If you wanna do something new at seven, let me know. If you just want me to replay this at seven, let me know. If you wanna meet back here at 12 after Wendy, let me know. Stop it, enough. Big shout out. To Zone, I am Zone. Big shout out to him. 
Mr. His amazing flyer. This was his flyer. Thank you, Zone. Okay, I feel a present. You come on live, you're going to be on the camera, so don't say nothing. My glasses on. And then, all right, and then, my youngest, Shane, they stayed in that class. Oh, my, this is my sister, my sister, my sister. 